All right, let's see. Test, test, test. Ah. All right, who's ready for a three hour plus stream? Hey, John Marcus, a new subscriber? That's not a new subscriber. Oh, 32 months. It always says new subscriber. And thank you. Nice seeing you, John Marcus. You will get your uh, your uh, song today. Well, I've got lots of people here. we got uh, a lot of new people joining. Thank you for all the follows. I'm still getting stuff organized over here. I tried to do uh, improve some things. It didn't work so well. Oh, look, Embers Adrift followed us. Thank you very much, Embers Adrift. Uh, for those who don't know, that is the project. That's one of our friends. Oh, and a hype drag. Keep meaning to adjust those settings. It's so early. Zero viewers. Now it's all on you guys. I bet we'll be get another uh, hype train later too, by the way. Almost to level one, though. Uh, but Embers Adrift is uh, Dr. Bob... Robert Thompson, whatever you want to call him, uh, Undone is his uh, shroud name, but uh, that is his project. And it is uh, pretty cool. They're doing similar stuff to us. They got a lot of things that they're doing very different, though. Oh, we already did we do a level already? Oh, and I see Lord British Rules just uh, jumped in. I think that is the Lord British Rules. So when he says Lord British rules, he might be a little bit, uh, a little bit biased. All right. Well, wow. We got uh, a lot of people here with uh, some bits showing up early on in the stream. Let me get some, get my volume up to get some background noise going there. Cause I can't even hear the, when the things go whoosh, whoosh. Uh, but let me catch up on people here. I got a, uh, Got to thank, uh, let's see, Metallics Blue, Kite980, TechWiz01. Thank you guys for the follow. John Marcus, as always, great seeing you. And thanks for the 1337 bits. For those who are new to the stream, that means I will be punishing you with a song. Sung a cappello and without practice. That is absolutely true because I did not practice. I haven't had to sing in a while here. Uh, NBNN, thank you for the raid. NBNN. -N. Uh, thank you for the new, or for the, uh, 29 raid. Embers Adrift again. Thank you. Preston Jung, nice seeing ya. Thank you for the bits. Brynjark, I Star Strider, thank you for the bits. Hype Train, going Treasure Pile, Lord British Rules, of course. Hollyhock, uh, hopefully you got that number I sent you and you can track your, uh, thing coming to you here. Uh, but it is in the mail, finally. Uh, that's, uh, I owed Hollyhock a special gift, which I packed about a week ago and then didn't get to the post office for almost a week because pandemic and we don't leave the house much except to go to the library. But Hollyhock, thank you very much. And Renai, thank you. Bridge Troll, Cowboy Bill, y'all. Irish Eyes, thank you very much. I'm probably going to be doing a lot of thank yous today, but, uh, so... Today, my plan for the stream, obviously this evening, we have a couple of special, very special guests. Looks like one of them's uh, watching the stream right now. Uh, hold on, and this is gonna be rough here for a bit. I didn't get to do as much preparation as I wanted to. I've been fighting some QA build problems with lots of exciting stuff going on on QA. Uh, but my plan for today is to Basically, just kind of go through and show off a lot of the stuff in the game that I think is unique to Shroud of the Avatar that uh, not many other games have or no other games have. To show off some of those features, again, as we uh, uh, continue to try to get the word out there as to how awesome the game is. But uh, I thought I'd just do a long stream since we were doing a cool stream this evening and I could uh, take advantage of that lead up of all the excitement people were looking forward to. Hey, and thank you very much, Stymie. Uh, agree, Bridge Troll. Long live the Syndicate. And Zythar and Dr. Hernbrand and Waldo, 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 Waldo. Thank you. Hollyhock. All right, well, I'll, I'll get you uh, the number again. 
Uh, but that worked through, uh, I did it through stamps, but it's just through USPS. So the package will be there. I swear, if you go put that number in USPS, it will work. Uh, but anyways, on to the stream here. So again, today my plan is just to do showing off some of the features. For a lot of you existing players, this will probably be... But, you know, you're here for the prizes anyway, so... Well, impressive. I'm already 83 uh, viewers. You must... A lot of people must have got the word. I guess I did send out an email this morning. That's usually we don't send out emails for streams, but I thought this one was uh, a good one to do it for. I will be getting a raffle going. Why don't I go ahead and do that now, if I can find where all my things are, my toys. Here's a toy. Hold on, let me get the uh, giveaway going. So the plan for the prizening is that when we get to four o'clock, we'll do the prizening. I will honor any hype trains we have along the way, and maybe we can do multiple hype trains. I didn't even notice. What did we get to on that one? Is that a two? Level four? Okay, well, level level three completed already, so at least three more hype, or three more rounds of prizes tonight. It's going to be a lot of prizes tonight in the Richard stream. Uh, lots of uh, stuff to celebrate. You didn't know about this stream? Well, there you go. I guess I need to send out uh, emails. That's I'm trying to do things to improve getting the word out there. That's one of those things. I mean, this is actually a conversation we have on the team. Uh, is uh, Yesterday I was like, you know what? I'm going to do like a long stream. Let's write down all some of the, you know, many of the cool things that we have that either we do really well or that are almost unique to the game or totally unique to the game. Uh, and the team started dumping tons of unique things to talk about, which are too many to do in one stream. Uh, and basically everybody by the end of it was like, why don't we have a bigger audience? Uh, and again, oh, John Marcus, two songs sound good. Okay, well, that's good. Because uh, John Marcus, I was actually thinking I would sing a song, even if you didn't show up today, to punish your uh, your friends. Because I was going to show off the music system, which is one of the things which is we're not it's not unique to our game, but it's one of the things I think we do pretty well. And uh, let's see. Uh, but uh, anyways, so by, by the end, anyways, by the end of it, we got this whole big long list of stuff we do well. And it, it, it made me just like, we got to get the word out more and do a better job of getting. So I'm trying to do a better job promoting the game. Uh, especially right now, there's a bit of a vacuum in the MMO world and trying to get some of those people who are, uh, got a little taste for MMO and really want to jump in and do something more. So I'm trying to get, uh, basically just get word out. So I decided to send emails this morning. I'm going to try to do even better on tweeting stuff and the Facebook messaging, all that stuff. But anyways, uh, John Marcus, we have not started MIDI, but that is one of the things we've talked about is adding it. We've actually looked and found a few third-party packages that we are looking at possibly bringing in so we can do some MIDI. That actually just came up earlier. For those who don't know, we currently support a format called ABC, which is just a simple text format, which you can do most stuff. It's good for playing instruments. It's not nearly as flexible as MIDI, though. Uh, but I will get to that uh, here in a bit. Man, you guys are really going for level four it's been a while since we've seen that type of uh that type of hype and there may be multiple hypes since we're doing a long stream today <sighs> how's everybody doing and i guess i'm still kind of uh, stalling here as i'm waiting for people to pour in but we already we're already over 100 viewers so i guess i can get going in terms of, uh, I mentioned I was working on QA stuff and I didn't get time to prep for things. We just had, there's this one nagging uh, Unity issue that comes up that part of the reason we want to upgrade to Unity 2021 is we know this issue is fixed in there. Level 4 completed what? That is a, uh, a while since we've seen a level 4. Is it over now? I think it's over now. Level three completed, okay. Almost level four. But anyways, uh, hopefully we can get on Unity 2021. That can be another topic later today while I try to fill three hours with no planning almost uh, at all. But uh, we have on QA, I've been working just the last couple days. Well, one, someone made a request for some of the, speaking of unique features, the inky stuff. 
that they're having trouble. I have, uh, I, for those who don't know, I added a save and load variable option for it. So you can actually save out stuff for players. So you can have multiple different inky people working together to do their own quest stuff. So you can have person A, you go talk to him and he sets a flag for you that person, you know, NPC B uh, will recognize in a totally different scene and even in a totally different game session if you log out or something. Uh, but they were needing that to be, they wanted some way to make it number. So I just went and cleaned up some of the inky stuff. So that'll now serialize out always as a string. But when it reads it back in, if it can turn it into an int safely, it'll turn it into an integer and return it as an integer. If it doesn't, it'll return it as a string. So all up to you. PVP fishing, uh, Lord Bridge Rules, that is a thing. Uh, and I've actually been taking uh, some uh, advice from people on making PvP fishing more meaningful. This is going to happen multiple times during the stream. I'm not sure if you heard that, but uh, there is a small dog over here who is crying. Whoa. For those who don't know, the small dog is named Mojito. He is an Italian Greyhound. He is actually in Al's head if you want to go visit him, but do not try and kill him. I keep threatening to make him so if you try to attack him, he's got like a, a billion hit points and he kills you in one shot, but I haven't done it yet. Let's see. All right, I did not do one of the things I was uh, planning on doing today, which is prepare a bunch of outfits. So I will be getting to those. Let me see if the team has anything to say. Uh, Elgarion says he'll probably join in for a topic or two, and uh, he'll be listening. So Elgarion's out there listening. There's going to be a phrase for tonight. You guys can say it right now if you want to. Pumpkin spice and everything nice is the phrase. If you are in-game and you want to get in on the uh, the evening prizenings, you can say it now and it'll last through the evening. Even if you say it now, in, and you have to say it now in game, do not say it in chat. You can say it in chat if you want to. It doesn't do anything but annoy your friends. And I know that's very popular uh, thing to do is to annoy your friends, but uh, pumpkin spice and everything nice. Say it in game now and it'll last until this evening when we do the drawings. You don't even have to be logged into the stream or logged into the game. Just say it in game now. So, Merrick Dragon, what if you can't get into game? Why can't you get into game, Merrick Dragon? Uh, and uh, Mojito is not a dragon in disguise, but uh, he may look like one to the next puppy that we're going to be getting. Your computer broke. Uh, oh, I'm on like 10 different topics, but yes, we are actually looking to get another puppy to join Mojito. Mojito is an amazing 12 years old Italian Greyhound and acts like a puppy still. Uh, speaking of amazing, here is uh, my amazing one, who's supposed to be working, but she is currently covered with unicorns. All right, I'm going to be on her for four hours, so you can come join me later if you want to. Get down? Yeah. Uh, Make it quick. I finished most of my work, you know that, right? Yeah, are you talking with your mouth full? Okay, well, I, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, he, Mojito is not a shiver dog like a, a Chihuahua. He's actually a very confident little dog. They shivered like that, you know, because they're insecure or whatever. But no, he's actually a very confident little dog. Uh, we've done a great job not breaking his spirit. Like we never really yell at him. So basically, he gets away with anything is what that means. But we tr do try to encourage good behavior form through positive reinforcement rather than negative. So, let's see. Uh, so, anyways, so I'm trying to think which thing to show first. Oh, uh, some more things going on QA. Let me get back to that since I was just talking about QA. Uh, there's a lot of PvP stuff going on right now. For those who don't know, this is a very short release. We just had a release last Thursday like a week from yesterday and next release is in two weeks less than two weeks now 
this is again due to the very poor planning of our founding fathers of America who put Thanksgiving on the last Thursday of the month, which is when we do our release. Uh, so we had to we have to bump our release up a week. So extremely short release. So I thought this would be a good one to spend some time on PvP in addition to Inky and some of the other stuff and bug fixes and all. Uh, but uh, I got a group of people going right now who are talking up PvP, giving me some feedback. All, so far, most of what's been done is we're trying to identify the big stuff that needs to be fixed before anything else matters. And of course, most important thing we need to, for PvP is more people in there. Uh, as part of getting that to happen, there's actually going to be, I'm going to turn up the PvP experience bonus to get more, entice more people into it. Again, this may just be for testing temporarily. It may last. We'll see how long it goes. Right now, I just turned it up to 25% of your flag PvP and in an open PV or open zone, uh, then you'll get a 25% experience bonus. To make that meaningful though, there were several exploits in there that you could do things like, I can go into my own player dungeon and PVP down there and no one can get to me and I basically just get 25 extra, or extra experience points, 25% uh, more experience points for no real extra risk. There's that one. There's also this exploit that has been around for a while. And again, it's one of those things that's been around for a while and it is absolutely unintended but it has been around so long that I think a lot of people just see it as a feature that there's a uh, one of these things where if you jiggle the handle just right, it, it gives you some benefits, which is the jiggling of the handle is I think you have to like go into single player mode and then go back into multiplayer mode. And sometimes if you do that, you'll end up with your own private instance. So, But we will be incentivizing it because again, number one thing we're going to need in PvP at least in the short term, long term too, but is more people trying out PvP. For those who don't know, there is very little to no risk involved in it. Almost no risk. Your gear can get injured. Uh, right now, though, almost all scenes have their ransoms off. Uh, and uh, Delta Lock Insano, you can do team PvP if you want to. There's a team PvP in Arteris where you can go in there and there's an arena thing in there. And you can go do some uh, PvP. And I've been seeing your network errors there, PC Randall. I didn't know what that was about, but but uh, anyways, the other thing is so fix. Hopefully, fix the exploit with the jiggling the handle and getting your own private instance, so you still get a bonus. Made it so you don't get the bonus if in private instances of dungeons or basements. Uh, those are the two first things. Already added a system in for PvP that will we're going to be using to help tune PvP that does not in any way impact PV. E. Uh, that is one of the big challenges with doing PvP is what's OP, what's overpowered in PvE is not the same thing that's overpowered in PvP. And if you nerf something in one of them, you know, it, it maybe screws up the other side thing. So basically this is a PvE is more balanced than it's been in a long time. It's better. I think some of the more recent changes are a good step in the right direction it's getting there at least. Uh, so the changes that are happening are purely PvP and we have, I now have the system in place so we can tweak individual parts. So for instance, there's, I think uh, right now, the only first things that were, that were tweaked were dropping aim shot and blinding shot, I think to 90% damage in PvP. So they do, nothing has changed in PvE they are still very powerful single target spells in PvE, but in PvP they're a little less powerful. So uh, there's also a little bit of extra adjustments to just how some of the damage stuff is calculated. Uh, let's see, the Maynard, will we see PvP and PvE gear? You absolutely will. And actually I was just in the Brave Coast Speaking of PvP, whoops, that's the wrong one. All right, load level brave, the brave coast. <laughs> Did you see that Lord British rules if you're still out there? I was looking at the camera while I was typing. Sorry, I always harass uh, Richard about his 
never learning to touch type properly. Instead, he's just the world's fastest two-finger typer. But anyways, I was up here on the top just because it was a pretty place to stand up here and I noticed uh, there's something new here and I don't even know whose place this is. Revenant. But Revenant has... Uh, has uh, lots of skulls in here, and these are every one of these is a player that he's killed. So some people are PvPing. If you come here, you can probably find your your skull in here, and this probably is the biggest risk of PvP. Uh, is not that you're going to lose gear or suffer like experience loss or anything. It's that your skull will end up on somebody's wall. Oh, I saw Asmodi Mool there. There you go. <laughs> but anyways pvp uh we're making it a bit more of a focus there's been just because there's i think there's a bit of a void uh and a lot of people looking for pvp you, know, you don't have mine revenant uh i'll gladly get you my skull up here i am flag pvp although i although i am g or uh, gm ghost right now but anyways, we are putting a big focus on PvP for at least a release or two, trying to get things better. Again, getting the balance in there so we can actually get some rewards for people to pull people in, number one. Uh, fixing the some of the most gratuitous abuses that are in there. Now we're focusing on balance. The next step that is going to be discussed and already discussed some is giving more interesting scenarios to fight, to, to do PvP in. And then the probably the last biggest missing element is rewards and coming up with better rewards. We have some rewards in there right now, but it's all based on gold coins. Uh, the other part of that is in terms of PvP and is bringing together, as you saw people wanting five versus five, well, you can go do that right now in the basement in Arteris, uh, but is bringing up group combat and getting more group uh, PvP in there. Which again, this is big, but part of that comes from coming up with a faction system. So that's one of the things being discussed right now is we actually have some simple faction systems in there. We want to get a real faction system that feels compelling to people and makes people want to PvP and take part in PvP. Uh, and this wall is insane, uh, Revenant. And I'm saying insane from a, I can't believe my frame rate isn't doing something different right now. <laughs> Yeah, in case you couldn't, you, you're not aware, every single one of those is a different skull he hand placed from somebody. Oh, Robert Baratheon, Hagfish, Lu Wan Zhang, Zen Kamudu, Olympi, Lord Beowulf, Sarah Dragon. Oh, here's a good one to get, Angelique Diwali. Anyways, a lot of people died to make this wall. So, uh, good stuff. That is one sm very small incentive, but again, having other incentives in there and then also pulling people together in groups, which again, faction will help with some of that. So, uh, And you guys should be talking to Lord British Rules to get him in there so that he can come give you a skull. Let you take, oh, wait, you can't get a Lord British skull. He'd never give you a Lord British skull. Maybe he would let people. Uh, let's see. So I guess I'm uh, done with the uh, intro or the start warm-up thing here, which I guess I can now say uh, welcome to the stream. My name is Chris Spears, also known as Atos in Game. I'm actually on Atos today. Uh, I think people who've been watching and playing the game know that I'm on Atos less and on uh, my alt account more, which is Chompers, because I'm usually in the game to, sadly, I don't get to do as much playing as I want. I have to do more testing and bug fixing and jumping in and out, so... Uh, yeah, the Lord British Skull would be the most desirable one. People are welcome to come get my skull sometime if they want it. Oh, uh, Alexander, it is pumpkin spice and everything nice. Technically, I wrote the little script thing to find it, and I think I shortened it to if you just say pumpkin spice, you'll get rewards. But pumpkin spice and everything nice if you want to play nice. Oh, let me go quick do a or do a quick uh, catch up on things. Thank you very much, Z, and thanks for all the feedback on deco or decorating stuff, Z. We're looking at fixes for your reports for the trees misbehaving and acting weird. 
Uh, there's also the lava fields that I think are not, I don't think they're live yet, uh, but I've got to do one more change to that for uh, Elgarion because right now that we have lava fields and you can move them around as you're placing them. But of course you can like move them over yourself. And right now, even with their replacement modes, the lava fields will burn you to death if the lava fields are over you, even though they're in like the, the deco mode. Uh, so I need to, uh, I need to go fix that for him. And Tagak, Tagak. Uh, if you're also a UO fan, not only will Lord British be with us tonight, but uh, Star Long, also known as Dark Star, also known as Lord Blackthorn, uh, Lord of Chaos, will be in there. And yes, when we've talked about uh, having factions in the game. Hey, <laughs> thank you very much, Richard. Thank you, thank you. Uh, when we talk about factions, yes, that is one of the factions that's been mentioned, is just doing the simple chaos versus uh, virtue or chaos versus order or uh, some people have said uh, Lord British faction versus Dark Star faction versus versus uh, Atos faction. I don't think I like that because I have an unfair advantage because uh, you know I'm like the programmer on the project, one of the programmers on the project so I can always give myself little advantages. Uh, humans versus Kobolds is another one. It's humans, Kobolds, Elves. Uh, tech versus magic factions is another one as we continue to try to you know some of the new things that are going to be coming online in the not too terribly distant future are going to be more tech related rather than magic and having some tech versus magic uh, but uh, yeah I even talk of you know simpler stuff of truth love and courage type factions but Lots of talk going on for that, trying to make it sure it's something meaningful and not trying to rush it in there. In terms of getting a faction system in there, that part is the easy part. That's really, I just got to save out some numbers, and, but it's trying to make sure we have all the systems behind it. So it's meaningful and it actually encourages play and it encourages group play and it doesn't just encourage everybody quick, go join uh, Dark Star side uh, and we will zerg and constantly beat down the Lord British side. So that's the stuff that's the tougher part. So. And yes, we absolutely will be looking to other games. Uh, but let's see. So I think last night I actually tried to show that like it was on last night playing as I continue to uh, stall for time here a little bit before I get to the bigger stuff I was going to talk about and show off things. But I actually was telling people, you can come to my stupid test zone that I uh, made four plus years ago and somehow it was still in the game. But it had been, it turned out it had been flagged as a test map. It's still in the map or in the build. So you guys have been downloading and patching that map forever and haven't been able to play. Uh, but that one is a horrible looking map that I made years ago just as to test out some ideas. Uh, I will go to that now. Just to show you what you were missing or not missing last night. And then I'm going to go to a scene that is actually beautiful and actually is. Oh, yep, there's a ton of errors in there. Uh, that is actually in the game right now, and some people have already got to it, which means once they get to a map, they they uh, basically can stay there forever because they found the, the login points. This is the map I was trying to get you guys to last night. This is the Atolls of Atos, which was actually, honestly a test map to see what problems would come up with a 4K by 4K map and massive view distances. Uh, and interesting stuff. So this is the one last night. I'm not going to show this too long because there may be pe people out there who don't know the game and I don't want them seeing this and thinking that uh, all the maps look like this. Not that it's absolutely horrible, but uh, it leaves uh, quite a bit to be desired. Uh, but this has actually been in the game for years. And just never did anything with it. Again, mostly a test map. And there's uh, multiple different big islands like this with some adventure type stuff on each of them. And then there's actually some play spaces out there. But that's not why we're here. The real reason we should be, or real thing we should be showing off is the oh. The thing that Liss Rostev made, which I summoned some people into last night, that actually is a map that's going to be going live. 
Is that weed? That I think that was actually. That's uh, very good. I think that was. We had just. We were talking with the Speed Tree people at that time, and they gave us a bunch of different free assets, including Speed Weed, which I believe is supposed to be a uh, version of a cannabis plant. So anyways, this scene here is one that is not officially live yet. It's still got a lot more NPC work to be done to it. It's more polished work to it. Uh, but it's getting pretty close and I invited some people in last night just because I knew we'd get some more some more testing going on. But this is Castle Atos, uh, which again, I'd never, there's not a single scene in the game. I just showed you two scenes in the game that have something to do with me. But this was one actually that I told them to name it whatever you want to and they actually list named it Castle Atos and made Castle Atos. So this is actually supposed to be a scene that is primarily for just hanging out, grouping. It's going to be a new type of pot, which is a player. Oh, someone wants to join. No, you gotta turn that off, man. You're doing the radio thing. <laughs> Give me a voice test. There's a voice test right here. Perfect. Saying something. Uh, but anyways, this is supposed to be kind of an area to, to congregate. We're trying to put in the traffic flow for lower level players to come here and just make it a space where there's not really any adventure type stuff in here. It's really just meant to be a pretty space, kind of like uh, kind of like the fishing island where you can come and hang out. There is actually fishing in here. This is uh, people were admiring the little aquarium that was built in here. And there's going to be at least one type of buff in here that will be a a uh, buff that is, it's kind of like a blessing, just like you'd get from a shrine. I'm not sure if it'll go on the shrine channel or have its own. It'll probably have its own just because we don't want to discourage people. But it'll be like that type of thing where you come here and you can get it and it'll last for three days or seven days. Just give people a reason to come here. Now to encourage people to stay here, even if it's AFK in here, just so you know it feels like there's a lot of people gathering here and making the castle field highly populated Chris, the, second. yeah uh, you're only showing my face by the way in the little uh, oh that's all they really care about it's anyways. fine by me no i'm in there i'm sure everyone loves it i'm there see like i'm right down here see hi see see me hi oh super tiny see <laughs> <laughs> I, I did not i thought you were an icon i thought you oh. were a, a skill icon well, now you're, now I'm huge and you're small. That's all right, you're the main talker. How about that? <sighs> uh, I want to add while you're doing that, uh, you mentioned that there's no uh, adventures in here, so there's no like bad guys to fight, but there are some quests you can pick up here, and uh, at least one you can accomplish while you're in here. Yeah, when this goes live next release, it'll also have the uh, a buff, as I mentioned, that'll be more of a blessing. The power of the buff, the uh, type buff that you get, it'll be kind of like the, the shrine, the blessing type stuff. Except in this case, it's going to be based on how many people are in the scene at any given time, active or otherwise. So, so again, it'll probably be, yeah. we'll see if how that... How long will it last? Uh, probably like other ones, it'll last, you know, a minimum of a day, probably more like three days or seven days, though. Kind of like other blessings. We don't want to force you to come back too often. You know, 24 right, hours so you is... you get a lot of people in there hanging out, you can go in, get you know, super juiced up with a three-day buff, and then uh, go uh, kill some dragon solo. So, uh, but anyways, this will be live next release. It actually is kind of live now. Uh, if you're in-game and you want to... Come on over here. You're welcome to send me a whisper right now. I'm confused why I can't get the uh, my my page up here, my thing to work. Why do I have to be so small? I feel so inferior. But if I pin myself, uh, it makes me big and you're inferior. And if I pin you, I'm small. How did you used to split it 50-50 before? That it just does that. I don't know what's going on. Maybe it only works that way if there's uh, more than two people on. More than two? Oh, maybe. We'll see. I love to look at this new uh, medieval castle set. Uh, oh, players not on. Hold on. Okay, now now you can send me a whisper. Yeah, I don't even get the if I'm in GM ghost mode, 
I don't even get the whisper you send it to me. Uh, we got a few people here. Okay, let me summon some of these people over. Bam. 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 And of course, this is one of those things. We know how this works. I think we did this like... I may have made the mistake one time with Tartars. Where we are like, the zone's not ready. It's not live. But if you want to, you can come test it. Uh, but, uh, you know, then you'll have to leave. And never come back. And of course, you guys get in there and, you know... Me not being so used to just using dev, using dev cheats get around, not being fully aware of all the different ways. As soon as you discover something in the scene, you're there forever because you can always teleport back to it. So, Oh, hold on. Let me get people caught up here. You can talk for a minute if you want to. All right. Uh, there's, uh, you'll see a lot of uh, common pieces throughout the scene, like in uh, front of uh, Chris's character there. You can see you know, there's some barrels, cages, some stalls, NPCs. But uh, a lot of the uh, the main uh, structural parts, uh, like uh, building walls and uh, like castle walls and you know, columns and things, roofs, uh, they're from a new uh, set we we got uh, called the medieval castle set. Uh, if anyone has yet been to the new uh, Manor of Mystery uh, uh, scene, then uh, some of those pieces are also used there to tip the scale, uh, but. Uh, with Rostov or Travis, uh, he has uh, really embraced this new look, and you can see uh, the, the walls in front of Chris and the, the, the buildings to the left and the right, they're using the new pieces. They're pretty awesome looking. They got this sort of like great, uh, sort of uh, grungy, uh, <laughs> made with no uh, <laughs> perfect tools, no, you know, made, made by eye, uh, uh, constructed by eye, kind of a quality. Uh, that's great for like a medieval village. Uh, there's, uh, uh, so it's not done. I, I think Chris might have mentioned that before. Uh, there's still a few things to go, uh, but it's it's uh, explorable. Uh, we have uh, 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 NPCs. Obviously, there's that cats, there's some dogs, uh, chickens, uh, a couple of horses. Uh, I put in a bunch of uh, turn-in uh, concepts in here. So if, if you get the, uh, from the random encounter, if you get the research uh, quest from the NPC uh, at the end, or if you get the, uh, the uh, Altruist uh, Pilgrim quest, you can turn those in here, either one, you can turn them in here. If you, uh, the, the kids have their own quest, uh, it's, it's just a little, little daily game, you can play with them, a little hide and seek type of quest. Uh, they also, uh, uh, Sort of testing this thing that I put in. Actually, I put it in a while ago, but I don't. I didn't mention it anyone, so I don't know if anyone's seen it. But some of these kids, they can play rock paper scissors. Uh, it doesn't force you to do the emote of rock paper scissors, but I, I think they might do it. I, you know, we'll, we'll see how it works out. Uh, but you can ask them about rock paper scissors. Uh, the uh, there's two uh, chefs in the uh, in uh, the tavern that will, uh, in the back of the tavern, that have like a little rivalry, or at least one of them considers it a rivalry, so you can go talk to them about it. Uh, we have the, uh, if you uh, tame a horse and you want to convert it to a, a mount, uh, one of those animal specialists is in here in the stable, so you can go uh, talk to that person. Uh, uh, to the, a little bit to the left of Chris's view, there's a uh, the storehouse container thing. Right now, there's just placeholder of the the Arterous ones, but it'll have its own custom uh, turn ins for the storehouse containers. Uh, which will be, uh, if you don't know what those are, that it's just sort of like a daily turn in of some uh, uh, mildly common items that you would normally not know what to do with. You just, you know, they're just so uh, uh, trivial to a lot of people, they would just sort of, uh, I don't know, maybe give it to a friend or whatever. But you could turn in these daily quests, get some rewards and there's a random chance of something even better uh, uh let, me, let me just jump in real quick and say all those people that that were excited and i had uh, i summoned them to me i forgot this morning remember earlier i mentioned i was working on that exploit that people had used for a long time for pvp where you toggle back and forth between private and public and private and public and you can sometimes get your own private public instance that other people can't get to but you still get the xp bonus I was still set in private mode when I summoned all of those first six or eight people. So you probably got in there and then after 30 seconds or so, it'd say, you're getting kicked uh, from the instance. 
That was my bad. I'm in a public instance now. If you need a resummon, let me know, and I will pull you over to the public one now. I just saw some people in here already, so I think that is where it's kicking them. But sorry, that was my bad because I was working on bugs this morning. And yes, I would like a room full of spiders because I could just go in and kill them all if they were if they were that easy. Uh, so uh, Chris is uh, walking towards the, the main castle of the Castle Atos community. Uh, there's a, a throne room in the center. Uh, I haven't been there yet. I, I, I glanced at the stream before, and I think uh, Chris is it is the aquarium uh, in yeah the room yet. Okay. Yeah, obviously, uh, Chris's aquarium uh, behind him in his, uh, in his video camera right there. You know, it's a, it's a big thing for Chris, and I think you have like several tanks, right? Yeah, like twenty. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we definitely uh, we realized, oh man, we have to put like uh, some sort of aquarium here. And I said, you know, let's make it big. Let's, let's make it like like the, the wall of the uh, first. I said, let's make it the, the back wall behind the throne. And then we said, no, no, no. We went out the waterfall in there, and that waterfall is the aeration for the aquarium. That's the whole. That's or a big chunk of the floor of the throne uh, throne room. But I haven't seen it yet, so I'm, I'm kind of excited to, to see what it looks like. Or in the final version, you know, it might be there now. Maybe it'll be uh, tweaked a little bit more. Uh, you know, we'll see. Uh, uh, Castle Atos, uh, we're still sort of going back and forth. Each one of us has our own special, you know, perfect uh, choice. Uh, for vocation, but it'll be somewhere in the, the, the Sultan Solace Bridge uh, area, somewhere along that, that strip of road, uh, probably roughly in the middle of it. Uh, it seems like we're sort of leaning toward. Uh, my preference is a little south. Travis wants a little north. Damon wants uh, something close to Sultan. Yeah, everyone's got their own choices, but I think we're going to sort of go close to uh, Travis's choice, depending upon uh, what's allowed by the, the map that we have. Uh, and let me, uh, uh, what else do we have? Uh, we'll, we'll have like, uh, uh, for those players who know uh, what a PRT is or, or if you've been to any small town, we'll have the basic complement of NPCs as well, uh, as in, uh, you know, the adventure trainer, crafting trainer, uh, public vendor, uh, even though there won't be any housing lots in here for players, uh, but we will have uh, one of those town criers like a Tango Meyer who can, you can at least like bind to and they'll tell you some basic stuff. Uh, we'll have, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the blacksmith, uh, crafting merchants, uh, uh, I mentioned the chefs. Uh, we'll also have like an innkeeper uh, who will sell you basic, you know, uh, you know food and drinks. Uh, uh, I'm, I'm sure there's a, there's a few other NPCs that I'm missing. Uh, uh, maybe half of them have unique names right now. I'd like to actually like increase that number of, uh, by a lot before it goes in. And also I want to add some more NPCs, more, more general residents uh, in the area. Uh, what else? Uh, I think uh, Travis has in mind uh, sort of a few uh, Easter egg sort of things. Uh, he also wants to have uh, some of this area, uh, you'll have access to, to other areas uh, from this area. So you might come in, hang out with your friends, do some quick crafting, uh, but uh, there might be like some, some quick access to like <clears throat> some place to adventure uh, in some way. Uh, he's got some plans for that, so I don't want to talk too much about it because he might have something to say later on or, or maybe he wants to keep it a secret. Oh, I'm looking at the aquarium oh, nice. room right now. This is awesome. Look at that. I don't know if you went in the throne room yet and looked down. Oh, yeah. It's got dolphins in here. When do we get those? <laughs> Travis putting in awesome, extra awesome. Uh, and there's a couple of movement bugs that snuck in with the smoothing stuff that people love showing off as you see people halfway down into the ground. Uh, that would be the, uh, if you, I think it's if you jump rapidly, you sink into the ground while you're running. Um, I'll get to it, especially after you guys are showing it off on the stream. You watch Submarine Mike there, jumping endlessly. Yeah, I see. Uh, <laughs> it might also, I don't know if it's related, but, you know, this probably needs a, the nav mesh to be rebuilt, the pad grid to be remade. Yeah, that's, that's all me. That's all the smoothing stuff, which, again, I could just turn roll it back to the stuff where it's less smooth. 
Uh, but I've had so many people tell me, no, it's so much better now. And I'm like, even stuff, I'm sure like these steps would probably not work with the old stuff. So I need to get back over there, but it's uh fix one thing. Break two is kind of what's been with the movement stuff. <sighs> I'm getting to it. Uh, Looks like that'll be. Uh, so, oh, uh, other NPCs I missed. Uh, we'll have, uh, you know, the banker. The uh, these merchant, the deco merchant, uh, Travis is uh, trying to coordinate to get some special uh, deco items for sale in here. Uh, yeah, it's it's an awesome new scene. No. Uh, but anyways, I'll show off stand around here some. But this uh, this again is not officially live. This is live next release. This is, it's just in here for testing stuff. There's still a couple of key things being added to it and some more polish work going on for it. But again, it looked uh, cool enough that I thought people would be excited about it, so I pulled them over here. Uh, Twilight Tempest, no, the, the fix, the sinking I said was fixed but wasn't was actually when someone, when you would attack, you yourself would sink into the ground slightly. This is something uh, very different actually. And actually, I do know a really easy fix for this one, so I'll get that in tomorrow morning and get a patch out for you guys. Hey, thank you very much, Right Plan, for the raid as well. Uh, let's see. Do, do, do. No, I fixed standing still and sinking is the thing that I fixed. That was basically you would sink your feet if you were, depending on the weapon you would use, you would sink into the ground six inches or so visually. That's been fixed. This is apparently still one of the same issues. That's one that I haven't noticed as much because I haven't been watching other clients with it. I've been working more on fixing it so it looks right to you. But again, for other people, I can. this should be a pretty easy fix. So I'll try and get that in. Uh, let's see. So anyway, so this was the new scene coming up in next release. Uh, that's the new spell. That's the tuned down version, by the way, of the VFX. Uh, that Damon wow. has done. Yeah. Oh, and it, I think it's looking bigger because you can see the guy up there on the the uh, second story up there. That guy, he's the guy casting. I didn't realize the lightning bolts went that far into the ground. So that look, looks extra cool because it goes so far into the ground. Wow. Yeah, I didn't know it that far into the ground. Uh, well, so it was much worse until yesterday. Uh, he, it was actually using the wrong version. It was actually using the version, actually until two days ago, I think it was using the version that was uh, exactly the same as the Frost Giant in Jotengrun, uh, which was absolutely massive and has just a massive light on it, which was the real thing that was causing problems, uh, crashing some people out of like six or seven of them got going at once. It had a light that had a range of 200 meters. So basically another directional or point light that would hit the entire scene and force re-rendering of a ton of stuff. So This kind of looks like it might have some light action going on there. I'm more than uh, 40 meters away, so I may be going to take a pass at that myself. But whoever's up there, yes, that does look awfully cool. <laughs> uh, I saw that uh, in the chat... Uh... I'm going to put you in a name, sorry, but uh, Lucien DeMort said, I'm not going to lie, y'all just made my day with the Duncan booth. Oh, yeah. That was, it's Travis, something that Travis sort of threw up as like an offhand wish list thing, and uh, I, I decided to make one. And it, it's basically a box with four switches uh, on one side uh, for the uh, person playing the game will pick a switch, and if they pick the right one, then the trapdoor opens, and whoever's standing on the trapdoor will the water filled box they'll fall into it. Uh, the switches aren't random so I actually have a, a, an extra secret switch on the back that the operator of the game can you know press a couple times and cycle through you know from one to two to three to four and he can pick which switch is the, the active one with that. So that's, that's how that's <laughs> going to work. And maybe eventually we'll have like fancier versions and this is a, a nice pretty sturdy version that uh, people will be able to get as, as deco pieces that they'll be able to put in their uh, I don't know if it's lot-based or pot-based. I think it'll be pot-based. And then uh, 
you know, added to like your little carnival or whatever you're gonna have. Uh, someone was saying they added masks. We actually didn't add masks. This is something we had in there. Uh, we actually talked about adding masks as uh, obviously lots of people still dealing with pandemic issues and pretty much masks are a normal thing you see every day now. Uh, but this is part of the doctor outfit that we've had for a while now. So uh, I was just wearing this. I think we had a, I went to a party, a garden party, and I put this outfit on. So I've been wearing it ever since. So. Uh, but we sort of, by the way, as in what land will this castle be located? It will be in Novia, uh, roughly between Sultan and Solus Bridge. And that is primarily we're trying to pick the heaviest traffic space for new players. Uh, so this would pull in new players and old players and, you know, again, kind of be a meeting space. So Yeah, uh, it kind of uh, points out probably near Arter since all the guards look like samurai. So it's in the perennial coast. So Loosely, perennial coast is a, is a mix of uh, Asian cultures and, and you know uh, anything that the rest of the world might have. Uh, so uh, Castle Atos is uh, representative of that. You know, the guards uh, are from uh, will have the, the armor from Arteris, uh, unless unless we switch it. Uh, you know, there's even place to right now. But uh, right now they're the, using the Arteris uh, look. Uh, I'll have to check with Travis because if he's like trying really hardcore to get this sort of like. Uh, Northwestern Europe medieval castle look, then maybe that, that might not work for him. And, and that's fine. But, uh, you know, the, the characters, the residents in here, potentially they're from all over the perennial coast and maybe even from like uh, far elsewhere. There, there's a couple people from Norgard in here. Uh, so it's a mix, a melting pot. Let's see. Do, 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 do. Just catching up on chat here. Let's see. Do do. Let me check. See if anybody needs to summon. Kind of got to get one more person here to summon. Again, remember pumpkin spice and everything nice is the phrase to get into the raffle. Once you say it one time in game in any chat channel, even private chat chat channel, uh, it uh, gets you entered for the prize. We got a Python script that goes and scrapes all that stuff for you and enters you into the prize. Uh, and uh, Mikhail Rain, have Sage message me, because it's, uh... oh wait, come on people, you're supposed to be whispering me. Whisper me if you want to summon. Uh, Crossfire Bugs Eye says aquarium needs more fish. So we have to be careful about uh, uh, fish and, and bird flocks because they are really expensive, uh, as in that they, they will like bog down your game uh, if we put too much in there. So we have to be very careful about how many we put in. You know, I'm sure Travis put in as many as he felt uh, would still be safe for players to come in and play in this area. Uh, and I just saw Winfield whispered to me uh, if he could get a summon. Uh, Winfield, the fishing is in the moat at the front of the castle, in case you're wondering. I also saw someone whisper or mention something that uh, honestly we'd forgotten. If you remember last uh, January and February, pretty much everyone in the entire world thought the big story for 2020 was going to be the horrific wildfires. And it, they were absolutely horrible and were an absolutely huge story. But we were planning on doing some uh koala bear backpacks that's still something that i want to get done but it was pretty quickly everybody's world thrown into chaos by uh, various pandemic stuff so uh those have not happened i still want to get them i th still think they're a cool idea uh but uh yeah i think our focus just changed in terms of what stuff we wanted to support and try to be oh hold on Try to be working on so all right getting quite a crowd in here uh, i can also summon people in here if they want to message uh, sanio whisper to sanio s-a-n-n-i-o uh, i can help chris seems busy and a cat backpack too uh 
But yeah, so anyway, so unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to do a lot, show off a lot of the stuff I wanted to show off in here. But I think I did see somebody using the music system to play instruments. If people, oh, nice outfit, Ihanis, that's good. Uh, but uh, this is one of the things we expected to happen here is for people to get together like in a, you know, the square and be playing music instruments using our music system. For those who don't know, and again, this stream, this early stream here is to talk about some of the features we think things we do extremely well. Okay, there we go. Is we have a very uh, 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 polished ABC music playing system where you can import songs in ABC format which there's a large library, large collection of songs out there, and you can upload your own ABC songs and build them into music, which you can then play in-game as an ABC file. We also have, and this is something that a couple other games do, I only know of one other game that has the next feature, which is you can synchronize with a group, so you can actually have multiple people uh, playing together. Uh, oh, and this may be a problem we need to look at, uh, Sanya, while I have you here. Mikhail Rain says he just got kicked to his own instance. Is it possible this scene is set to 16 people or something, or 32 people? Uh, I thought he said it to 128. Actually. Okay. It may be something totally different. Let me summon. I got a few more people coming over here. Yeah. Uh, I'll also point out that there's no fishing or swimming in the boat right now. What? <sighs> Travis doesn't have the water trigger in, in this version. Hold well, uh, on, I'm getting caught up. Players, Juanita, Stymie, uh, your summon. Yeah, okay, you got Stymie. I was about to hit Stymie. I think I got Juanita too, so I think we both did. Oh. <laughs> Double summon. Uh, uh, I, I, you also see there's extra NPCs I had in that, that aren't visible, so Travis may have turned off a lot of the NPCs. Uh, I think he turned up the human NPCs, uh, but left like cats, dogs. I am going to go so check. This will feel more populated. Uh, I mean, players will make it feel populated, obviously, when they're here. But uh, uh, all the NPCs I was mentioning before, they'll be here as well. Uh, yes, this is set to one twenty-eight, so it should be fine for all these people. I'm not sure. Yeah. Well, one twenty-eight actually works out well with whatever we have here. Should be okay, but I guess we'll see. Oh, the beggars yeah. he has on the beggars and the children. I guess he just turned off some of them. Uh, but anyway, so music system is going to be uh, one of the things I was going to show off today. But we have a couple people showing it off for us. Uh, we won't uh, maybe too much to ask for them to get organized and put some stuff together there. But uh, uh, one of the other things, which is also show off worthy is just vast number of outfits uh, and also emotes and we have a dyeing system so you can dye different clothes we have uh, different channels for it so you can take an individual piece and it'll have multiple channels so you can apply the dye to different channels and it'll look uh, look different so it'll hit part of the cloaks so you can dye part of it green and part of it red or whatever you want to do we have, speaking of unique systems, this is one I wanted to make sure and show off here, which is we have a heraldry system. Uh, we have, there's kind of two versions of it. One is you can put together your own pieces and make heraldry, but what 99% of the people end up doing, it's not quite that much. You can actually create your own Im or image, it's gotta be a square image, and upload the image. And then we have an approval process that usually takes within just a few days. And then you have uh, your own heraldry in game that you can include anywhere in game. This looks like more of a traditional style heraldry, but uh, other people have more, you know, complex stuff. Actually, I'm not sure if that one is the uh, uh, autism awareness cloak, the puzzle tree, or if that's actually their their uh, heraldry but once you have your heraldry in game you can apply it to any number of things i'm sure if i wander around i can probably find a few more pieces there that one just looks like a lord british cloak uh, that one is uh, i don't know if that's 
somebody's heraldry or something we have. It looks like something we have, but they may have just done a great job making it fit. That definitely looks like some heraldry. And walking around looking at everybody's back. Uh, it is also, I should point out, it's not just cloaks that it goes on. I think people just put it on their cloak because it makes, you know, it's the most visible. piece. Oh, there's somebody trying to walk over. Cowboy Bill's trying to show off his. How did you get that approved, Cowboy Bill? <laughs> Uh, that is one thing is we do have to hand approve them. Uh, so sometimes some slightly questionable stuff sneaks through. I don't know if we've ever removed anybody's heraldry. Have we, have we ever like revoked anybody's heraldry? We do have that system in place, but our usual rules for it, in case you're wondering, are uh, obviously you can't put copyrighted material in there. Order of Chivalry, somebody was saying. Twilight Tempest. Is uh, let me get him summoned here. I think he needs a summon, not a actual invite to party. Uh, but yeah, our usual rules are you can't have any copyrighted material, obviously. And usually, what we'll do is if it's something we're questionable about, we'll actually do like a Google search and see what comes up. Uh, we can usually catch up. Oh, there's somebody else showing off some chivalry, I think. Is that a skull crusher? That looks like that would be a skull crusher's uh, right there. Skull and dude about to crush it, right? <laughs> but anyways, we actually have, you can get your own heraldry into the game. Oh, and I didn't finish. So uh, no copyrighted materials. We try not to do anything too photorealistic. It needs to feel like it's gonna fit pretty well in game, which is why I was uh, giving Cowboy Bill a little trouble about his is that didn't quite fit medievally feeling thing. Uh, the other thing is we try to not have any words, letters, writing on there. So you can't put like, you know, uh, syndicate rocks or something like that. It's got to feel like something that's in there. And that's, again, no, no words. And I'm trying to remember if we allow runes, if we've been allowing runes. We've been slacking a little bit and being a little nicer on some of those things. But... Uh, Summoning Royu, of course you can get a summon. I just summon the uh, Gregor Pendrain. And are you possibly in a different? In no, you're right over there. I was gonna say a couple I mean, people right have right said right. they've gone to different instances. Again, there may be some weirdness going on, just because I think I may have started multiple instances with some of the stuff I was doing for testing earlier. Uh, so anyway, so heraldry is one of the things if you're wondering, you know, looking for unique features in Shroud of the Avatar. As far as I know, we're the only one that has that type of system where you can have your truly your own uh, own uh, own heraldry in there. Still summoning people. Now, as for music and what stuff people bring in the ABC files that. Again, that's your data, and you're playing it on your computer up for other people to hear. But uh, pr get away with pretty much anything. I think we've got I've got some Queen songs that people have given me that I need to do soon because I need to sing for you guys. I haven't done a song for you guys in months, month and a half. Uh, role playing is another big thing that we have. There's tons of different options for role playing. There's uh, as I was looking at the guy down here who's shrunk, but. Uh, one of the things we have that a lot of people use, if you're wondering, like, do each of these people go and, like, put on this perfect outfit each time? Do they actually fight in this stuff? Well, some people do, are wearing just their combat outfits. A lot of people, though, use our, what we call our deck system, which is for combat. But with the deck system, you basically build out your, your builds, and then you can go down and assign, attach your equipment. So you can link your current equipment to a build. Well, guess what? People, of course, use this to, instead of making decks for combat, they'll also use this to set up different outfits. So they'll have like their pirate outfit and they'll have their uh, their dance outfit and they'll have their PvP tournament outfit. Two songs. Pass one to Lava Gix. Is Lava Gix around here? If Lava Gix is around here and wants to join, uh, our stream, I would love to have Lava Gix on here. Lava Gix, are you out there?
Hold on, I'm trying to see. And uh, Lava Geeks, I don't think I ever actually kicked you off of our chat. I may have though, like our team chat. I was gonna say you can come here, but I'll just I'll whisper you the uh, invite. One second. I think I'm wind whispering you an invite. Nope. Hold on, let me whisper you through the other interface because I would love to get you in here. You're gonna sing us a song, right, Lava Geeks? Right? Oh, working. What does that have to matter? <sighs> you won't sing at work? It's probably working from home. If you wanna join, buddy. There's the invite for you. Whoops. Totally optional. Working is overrated. I'm working right now. I don't know what you guys are talking about. Yeah, I'm excited too. I'm answering a lot of questions in this chat. <laughs> uh oh, I got somebody spamming up a texture. I'm trying to see what it is. There's uh, some uh, bug here. Looks like there's a problem with uh, something somebody's doing out there. You guys don't even know what I'm talking about, but it's going to introduce a small amount of lag over time, I think. Uh, but let me see if I need to get any invites here. Got some more summon. Thoric, you want to be summoned? I would have thought you would know how to get there. Dysis. All right. Here, I'll be big for a while now. Uh, but let's see if there's anything else I can call out that is unique. How about uh, tamed animals? You guys, I see there's uh, one little dragon down here. Anybody want to pull out some tamed animals here as we talk about features that are fairly unique to Shroud? There we go. That's what I was looking for. Uh, so this is another thing, again, this was something that was very popular in Ultima Online, so of course we had to try to do some system to it. Uh, we It's a little different than what it was in Ultima Online, but I think it's actually getting better and better. If you have not seen it lately, the creatures actually have, the pets actually have their own uh, UI now, so you can actually inspect if you haven't looked at it, looked at these guys lately. So for instance, here is this sweet little sweet little guy right there. Oh, isn't he cute? But you can actually pull up the information. This has been one of the things we've been trying to do more and more of, is exposing a lot of this information that's been completely hidden to you guys. Exposing. This is actually, if uh, Devil Cult's out there, you can say, attaboy, Devil Cult. Uh, he's been doing a lot of this stuff and just bringing this stuff up. He's been a fabulous uh, addition to the team. And uh, he's also added uh, these pet items that are for pets, so you can equip your pet with some things as well now, so they can have their own equipment to expand on. More of that's going to be going in. That was uh, kind of touches multiple people's areas, but Elgarion's been adding some in addition to Devil Cult, so there'll be more and more pet gear showing up over time. Good job, Devil Cult. Let's see. Do, do, All right, do, I'm summoning uh, Gix into the scene. I want to summon him into the summon chat. Me. Oh, little pigs here. Uh, but anyways, the taming system, for those who don't know, again, there's lots of different creatures you can tame. Uh, we're seeing some of the popular ones. I know boars are popular, bears are popular. Uh, the wyverns and dragons have gotten more popular recently uh, because they actually had some serious issues when there's still one issue that is uh, maybe you guys can answer is it better is the wyvern attack speed and wyvern issues are they have they improved did my changes last release uh, help out with that quite a bit hopefully you're gonna say yes but anyways 
Uh, but our taming system is pretty much what you would expect. You go out and most animal intelligence things uh, you can, it helps to beat them down a little bit to get them to submit, but then you can do your taming. And, uh, once you tame it, then you have it, basically it, it's on a necklace and whenever you want to, you can swap out creatures. It actually creates an economy for some of the tamed creatures still. Bridge Troll says, alligator is still king, maybe red snarler. Beating animals, absolutely beat animals into submission. Uh, but yeah, the red ice snarlers, I think they're just called red snarlers, but they're supposed to be red ice snarlers because it's supposed to be the blood that they've shed all over the ice from killing things. Chest Mimic doesn't have a dance? I blame Lava Gix. Can I still blame Lava Gix for things? Is it, is it past time to being able to blame him? Uh, here's a couple of the other more popular ones that are just fun, which is uh, Lightning and Nightmares. Whoops. But anyways, taming's a, a big part of the game. A lot of people use that as their primary play style. You can use some of the guys make, you know, they have different attributes and different things that they're better at. Uh, we try, every release I try to make it so there's no one absolute best one, although Bridge Troll... Uh, is way uh, wiser than me, and he says uh, alligator's where it's at right now. Alligator or snarler. Twenty hmm. Tempest has said that uh, they got uh, after I summoned them, they got kicked out of the uh, scene again. Yeah, that's odd. I wonder if there's something uh, out of sync on the server in terms of max number. We're definitely over 16 people. These people are having no issues. Uh, yeah, pretty yeah. sure I have not published a new patch lately, so I don't think that's it. Sometimes people get kicked to a different instance if they're on a different patch than everybody else. Uh, but that's definitely not the uh, case. Uh, maybe I wonder if it has something to do with their party, like their party. That may be it. You guys may need to lose your... If you're in a party and having issues, that may be it. Is If someone got summoned to the private instance, they could have a private instance, uh, and you're getting sucked to that one. That's actually, by the way, that's some of the code I'm looking at right now is trying to improve some of that logic as I was working on today to try and fix the QA uh, or the uh, PvP exploit. And that'll be ready to go to QA here shortly. But yeah, you may need to drop your party to get summoned if someone in your party got summoned to the wrong instance. Because they'll go to keep going to the wrong instance. Oh. Twilight Tempest is not in the party and just switch to open mode to hopefully fix the issue. Ah, okay, yeah. Yeah, you'll probably you'll probably need to be in open mode if you're in if in uh, private mode. Uh, that is another thing that has some quirks to it, but it does have some really big advantages, which is for those who don't know. Uh, we are a single shard game. We've been a single shard by design since day one. And we also have multiple different play modes. Now, single shard means rather than some games will do spin up a uh, a whole new a server European set. Server, a yeah. American server. Well, and that's European server. Yeah, American server. There's some semi-legitimate reasons to have that just due to lag issues. But... Uh, uh, some things have lots and lots and lots of servers. I mean, when you wow, uh, New World spun up, I think, 475 servers. So if you're trying to play with your friend and they're on a different server, you basically have to try and get everybody transferred to a single server. Uh, and they also have, you know, that type of model has a pretty low server cap. We actually went a different way, which is we made sure everything in the server framework can cluster so we can add more boxes if we need to to build things up but instead of doing the everybody's going to go to a totally different shard we actually since we are an instanced game everybody can play in the same instance but if an instance gets too crowded uh it'll spin up a whole new instance for it now this is again it all depends on what the instance is but this does let us do things like if we built a dungeon out and we think 16 people is the right number of people for that dungeon or a single group uh, we can set it to have that. And then if more people than that jump into the dungeon, 
then it'll just spawn up another instance of it. And again, that's something that's pretty important that has been problematic in many games. You know, if you're looking for a quest NPC and a hundred other people are looking for a quest, the same quest NPC, yeah, you know, it's one of those common things in in many games. Uh, is yeah, you're gonna there's basically a line of people waiting there, and people getting angry with each other as you're trying to get the quest NPC or the you know wolf that keeps respawning. So by us having instances, out, go ahead. I'd like to point out that uh, for new players, uh, players who don't really play any of these types of online games, when we say new instance. It means sort of like mm. there's like a parallel dimension, a duplicate of that scene where you play in. But it's only temporary. You're still in the same world. You can never accidentally join the wrong world and then you can't yeah. play with your friend anymore. Yeah. So we've temporarily split it. And in fact, if, if, uh, if you have a friend on your friends list, you can actually sort of just boop, push yourself over to him or you can push yourself over to you and, and we can start teaming up, uh, you can start teaming up uh, together. Uh, so it's just it's just a temporary blip yep. uh, that you can actually uh, overcome uh, like on your own. In, in, and, and that's one of those things, as I was mentioning, is we were seeing the people here who were apparently in a party that was doing private instances, and that's just so they don't have to share instances, because you always have the option to choose to play in a private instance, unless you're going into PvP areas. But I think they were in a party that was set to like not play with anybody else, and then we summoned them, uh, which, again, that's something that only happens when a GM gets involved and does some stuff, uh, but it can get some weird stuff, because they got somebody to, I think, to the wrong instance, and this is the most likely thing to happen. They got somebody to the wrong instance, and then the rest of the party keeps trying to go over there when they're getting summoned. But Again, that may not have been what happened, but that is my guess for it. Uh, but yes, but what uh, Keith said is you'll never end up in a server where you can't play with your friends. And this is also if you're in a party with people and you go to instances, that's one of those rules is hard rules is you will always end up in the same instance as your party no matter what. So uh, it's basically to make sure you can always play. Uh, this is another thing that's important is uh, I think, yeah, somebody was saying New World has 500 uh, damn servers. This is another thing that's important for in terms of just continuity and not screwing people up is, you know, games have a lot of people, they have a little people, the, you know, middle of the night, whatever. It This makes sure it, that there's always, you know, the places, areas, play spaces feel like it has the right number of people. And of course, we would always love to have more people, uh, but we don't have to worry about a server collapse you know, combining servers or that type thing is uh, if populations change over time. So, anyways, it's that's the system we use, and that is something that's unique. But it also again lets you do things like say, today I just want to play by myself. I want to go mine, and I don't want to have to compete with other people in the mine. Or I want to go do questing, and I just want to go quest, do stuff by myself. And you can choose to play, you know by yourself or you can play open mode or you can go just group with your party and play with your party where you're not seeing things so anyways that's another one of our unique features which is kind of what the point of this stream my three hour warm-up getting to uh, richard stream the richard and star stream uh and i just realized we've been here for more than an hour and i haven't given away a single prize you guys should be doing a raffle is it 600 servers uh yeah, patch was yesterday. Oh, it's people here. I know. Too many people. Man, that alligator or crocodile, whatever we have, huge. It's a boar. And for those who are wondering, I am uh, I'm sitting here watching, waiting to see if my frame rate has any issues here. That we are always a little focused on frame rate. But uh, I am playing on a NVIDIA 2060, so last generation kind of middle of the pack video card, so. I am uh, watching a well. turkey dance and he's doing the Macarena. Hmm. That's good. Uh, and he's pretty good at it. That is one of those things. Uh, nice outfit there, CC. Again, as I was mentioning, uh, for role players, just insane number of uh, costume combinations and die combinations, hundreds and hundreds of things, items. Yeah, a lot uh, of our clothing, uh, when it's dyeable, it actually has two die slots. 
uh, like a primary mm -hmm. and secondary colors and, and we might have like a third thing so imagine it, maybe it's like a, a leather armor piece that has like the, the uh, a main body part that is uh, dyeable for one color and then maybe the trim is dyeable a second color and then of course you have like the straps and whatever that, that don't dye as well uh, but for the most part you, you need some like if you look at like some of the capes these people have or, or the, the, the dresses or uh, hats it's it's uh, crazy how you can sort of mix and match not only the pieces but the colors that you wear your Tokyo can sort of be colored up with the similar colors. Uh, and some of these things are store items. Uh, most of the things are just items that have been crafted. We're a big crafting world. There's hundreds and hundreds of things you can craft in combinations of outfits you can put together. Uh, a lot of them are also uh, just monthly rewards. We do monthly rewards and uh, tons of different pets. Again, the crocodile is a popular tamed pet here. Is this, who is this? The Blaze Garcink. Yeah, a nice outfit there, Blaze. And again, that is probably his uh, crest or his uh, heraldry there, his unique heraldry. But tons and tons of stuff uh, there. My dog on the screen, Hero. Uh, there is a, uh, still pushing for Damon to get a uh, model of Hero in the game dog similar to my dog hero that you can get for yourself not a high priority but he's got it on his list to work on nice oh, by the way for those people who didn't realize uh this i think the scarecrow's in the game now right chris the uh i honestly don't even know the players would probably know more than uh, i would i i put it in a patch note that it went live because i saw that in the change list that you had guys had made a great but uh yeah yeah uh, South Quell Woods, for those who don't know the area, uh, Quell is sort of uh, east of Exeter, north of uh, Necropolis, on the north side of uh, that mountain. Uh, Lucien de Mort, killed the Scarecrow a few times, got the legend of the Scarecrow, common recipe, and some nice. Nice, so it's in. Uh, so if you go to that scene, uh, that scene originally was a complete clone of one other scene, I forget the original. Uh, but uh, uh, the scene had sort of four quadrants, which was uh, 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 spider cave, uh, barbarian uh, treehouses, uh, logging camp, and then a uh, logging village along the river. Uh, so the river's changed a little bit. The logging village was removed, and there's now now a farm there with uh, flat fields, and the farm is where you want to go to fight the scarecrow. Uh, the uh, mildly obvious uh, trigger is that uh, there are four prop scarecrows, like your standard scarecrow, uh, you know, just hanging out in the field. Uh, if you uh, uh, interact with one, you know, double click it, the scarecrow will, you know, go on fire. Uh, if you light all four of them up before any of them go out, before any of them, you know, the fire stops, uh, then uh, you will uh, start a, 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 a wave battle, short wave battle that will culminate in the scarecrow. Uh, and also the, the, the logging uh, camp, the offices uh, that were nearby, I changed those a little bit. I moved those offices and there's like a little mansion there now. And, uh, but all the all the resources that with, uh, were there are still there. Uh, all the bad guys that were there are there, except in the Scarecrow area. I had to sort of shove them around a little bit. Uh, uh, there's some slightly higher tier bad guys there. Uh, normally, aside from the Scarecrow fight, uh, it's normally a tier three scene. Now it's a three plus because that that farm area is uh, is a is a mostly tier four area right now. And then of course when you fight the, the bad guys of the way battle, they're like tier five. And, Scarecrow was give or take a tier 10 ish kind of a guy, maybe more. Uh, but, uh, but there you go. All right, so just walking around showing off here. So, uh, again, nearly unlimited costume outfits there. And then we also have some dyes. Uh, you know, some dyes are just boring, not boring, you know, just interesting colors. Uh, to make stuff look cool, but then some others are like sparkling dyes and magic dyes. Uh, we have tried, also we've always tried to have a sense of humor on the team. As I mentioned, I saw four or five things here. You know, players have their own sense of humor. As I see the Baconator over here being a giant, somebody's giant pig. Uh, and Sting. Uh, but, uh, you know, we have dances. So one of the rules is... Uh, all pets are supposed to have dances. I think somebody said that the 
chest, the mimic chest mimic doesn't have a dance. We gotta fix that. But also, uh, speaking of having a sense of humor, we have tree ants in the game. They're not called tree ants, uh, but uh, reapers. Yeah, reapers. Reapers. Yeah. But uh, you can see we have a junior reaper pet down here. Totally not uh, Baby Groot. That may have come out online sometime around when Baby Groot was a thing. We try to have a always have a sense of humor and stuff without breaking immersion too terribly much. Oh look, Al's dancing, Turkey's dancing. Oh yeah, Turkey's doing the Macarena. Get down, Turkey. Uh, but anyways. So in terms of uh, just unique stuff, again, I think that's one of the things we always try to do is make sure we have a lot of cool stuff for role playing. Wisps have no dance. I can see him dancing right there. Look, dance, 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 dance. <laughs> uh, you may be correct to Larferlo. They may not have a dance. I don't know how we would know that. Gets to be a little bit of like a bouncing ball, maybe. All the bouncing ball. Hold on, talking to Dark Star. Oh my goodness. Uh, let's see. So, in terms of other unique things, I hate leaving the scene here uh, with a bunch of stuff, cool stuff going on here. The phoenix has a nice dance. I could say rather than scene, it's continue something beautiful. You need to switch scenes. Oh, I just meant in terms of it uh, showing well for people. Oh, and how many emotes do we have now? Like 400 emotes or something? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, maybe. I think that's another unique thing if we're talking about unique stuff in terms of uh, sales pitch for people. Is, uh, yeah, which PC Randall called out probably people should do is uh, many of the emotes that we have in the game are teachable. And that once you learn an emote, you can teach someone else. So people kind of have these, they used to call them emote orgies, that they would go into basements and you would just go around exchanging emotes with everybody else. Uh, but uh, many of the emotes are teachable and you can go and learn emotes from other people in terms of, you know, Filling out your yeah, emote actually, list. Levels of teachable too. Like you can, yeah. Some emotes just you can just teach it once, and then it's that's the end of the chain right there. Your friend can't teach it to the third person. But we also have some that you could just like teach it indefinitely. Everyone can just teach everyone else. Uh, so all you need to do is like find a friend, you know, make a friend, learn that emote, and then you know, share it with anybody you want. Let's see. And actually, yeah, I. I I was uh, very surprised when we put that in the game. I was pretty happy with that. It's usually when you earn like an emote in another game, it's you know it's like a quest reward or maybe some special event, uh, like a holiday event. And but it's just that's it. You just get it, and it's sort of like self-contained. But this is like a social event, uh, like you're saying that people get together and they, they share emotes. Uh, this one that I'm doing right here is actually one of the rarest ones in the game. <laughs> which is uh, another unique thing we have, is we've got a few people who follow the game who are uh, celebrity status type people, and Shooter Jennings is one of them. Uh, that is Waylon Jennings' son, but he's also a, a well-known musician in his own right, and also works with, uh, he was uh, produced Marilyn Manson's last record, Brandy Carlisle, several other big names out there, won a bunch of awards. He was just actually on Saturday Night Live two weeks ago, but we made him his own emote that only he can teach when he comes in game, which I think he's only given it out to about a dozen people or so, uh, but looks like this. But if you want to learn that emote, if you see somebody who has that emote, that's because Shooter Jennings himself taught it to somebody. So. Is there a head smack? There is a head smack emote. I'm not sure what the head smack emote is. Head stand, there's head bang, that's a dance. Heart attack. Uh. Face palm. Face palm, that's it. Face palm. 
There's face palm, and I think face slap is actually one to do to other people. We also have the one where you you had the board and you bang yourself in the head with the board. Yeah, what that's called too. Cause there's so many. Oh yeah, that's uh, and again that goes back to us trying to have a sense of humor on things. Every every uh, April Fools, we usually try to do a couple of April Foolsy type things, but. For a while there, we were doing, <laughs> yeah. Uh, for a while there, we were doing uh, Monty Python things. So we've got five or six different Monty Python thing, themed things. There's actually we have an instrument. I mentioned the music system earlier. Uh, we have a cowbell in game uh, that uh, is for the small tree thing that is called a reaper. Uh, but the cowboy bell has special effects that only affect the reaper. So get it, cowbell. Don't fear the reaper. Need more cowbell? Huh? <laughs> oh, I'm still talking to the stream on micro cam. I'll get back on the big cam. Haha. -ha. Now I shall be a giant next to uh, Sanyo. And I think this camera stuff, I think it only does this when there's two people on there. So once a uh, third person gets on here, I know Ravlox is going to be here, Darkstar is going to be here, Richard's going to be here, a few other people will be here. So I think this, it'll all work out. Speaking of uh, uh, Ravlox, there's a member of the Portalarium Guild. I wonder who that is. Let's see. Hold on, I'm checking up on thing. Uh, someone just said, mentioned another thing that we have that is a unique feature because it just went down, <laughs> which I can talk about. Uh, we have a, oh, am I going to be, hey, there we go. Now it's looking right. My hero, you saved us. Uh, but we have a, what we call our public API or public data API for those who want to do their own web pages. We have exposed some slightly restricted uh, strip data to you guys. You can ping with uh, any number of ways, but it's just on Elasticsearch server for those who know that kind of stuff. So you can actually go and do figure out some economy things for you. Sometimes you guys are figuring out too much economy stuff, but then uh, we'll nerf it a little bit. But yeah, we expose a public data API to you. I mentioned that because it looks like it was down. I will, uh, this is, oh, it's a long story. But again, as we continue to try and make progress and make sure the game is as stable as possible, long-term in the past, really the only times we've had outages have had to do with Amazon, AWS servers uh, going down on us suddenly. And it's usually, this has happened maybe four times in the past two years. But the way it usually happens is all of a sudden we'll get emails from or alerts from our stuff saying servers down. Uh, we'll get an email shortly after that from Amazon saying your server has been retired with no warning whatsoever. Uh, so how many times has that happened? Ravelox, you remember how many times we've lost an AWS box in the last year or so? It's a number. It's, it's at least three or four. You're not speaking. I can't make you speak. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> nope, you're still not speaking. Anyways, he'll be able to speak soon, but it's a number. It's like it's like four times we've had. Uh, so over the past year plus, the only times we've had outages, the game that game servers have actually not gone down uh, other than for about 30 minutes once a month for patches. This is another thing that I probably would should throw out as something unique. We have had our login server die because uh, we actually run the servers on our own hardware, the actual game servers, to uh, you know manage our costs and keep things reasonable and also so if it goes down, we can manage it ourselves directly. But our web server and our login server, because those contain personal information, what's considered personal information under the General Data Protection Act, we keep those in Europe. Uh, because no servers in the U.S. are considered safe enough uh, because of uh, various FBI and NSA and other things. So anyway, so those have to live in Europe, but they've been living on AWS for the past seven, eight years. 
But right now we're in the process of one, switching things over to a friendlier, easier to manage version flavor of uh, Linux. I think it's actually Debian to be more specific. Uh, but we're moving it to every all of our different boxes for our web server and login and database and everything. They're moving to a easier to maintain version of Debian that has a longer lifespan in terms of uh, long-term support. And we're moving those off of AWS to our own boxes. So I think the thing that just happened was our data API went down temporarily because uh, we're in the middle of deploying those. Probably shouldn't be deploying them in the middle of a big stream like this, huh? <laughs> okay, can you hear me now? Yes. yes. All right, there we go. So I had to switch things around for the other mic. Uh, yeah, we lost, um, AWS re retired three of our boxes and we lost the box about five different times for just them taking it down for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, the Hondas, if it were Amaton sabotage, that might explain it, but I think it's really just they have, they don't consider their boxes permanent. We run redundant boxes wherever we can, but you pay per box on Amazon. So it feels like some of it is, you know, the thing is usually like, oh, well, you should always run multiple boxes because, you know, you can't count on them. Make sure you have redundancy. Well, we do have redundancies in critical things like databases and stuff like that. But running redundancies on everything doubles our cost. And that's actually Amazon. We spend more on our Amazon web server box than we do supporting our entire team and the game servers uh, in our own data center. Uh, but uh, anyways, other than the Amazon outages that we're going to be working around here shortly and moving off of AWS to get more stable, we have had almost no outages over the last five-ish years. We had one spell where we had three outages and we had to replace one server box. Uh, but we're looking at, I think last time we calculated it up, it was more in the 99.8% uptime range. And if you exclude that one downtime, we're really in the 99.9. .9. And that includes uh, our 30 minutes to an hour of downtime once a month for patches. So uh, this is, again, since this is a stream that I said we're talking about all the stuff that Shroud does well and maybe unique to Shroud is we are, and also as I watch uh, uh, other projects, as I watch concurrency graphs and see them go to zero for hours at a time, uh, multiple times a week, one of the things we do really well is we do our server deployments pretty well. Uh, I'm the server deploy guy, but it's brain dead enough. Anybody on the team could probably do it. We have everything down. We have it all down to a process. But the thing that is more unique about it than, you know, it being down to mostly just a few button clicks is that we have a system that does rolling servers. So if I were to publish a server, a new client, a new server right now, you would not see anything at all. Everybody would still be here. The only sign that you would have that the a totally new server is live and a totally new client is live is uh, you would get a message at some point saying, hey, this instance is going to shut down in 60 minutes. And I'm sure people who've played the game a lot have seen that and don't know what that is. That is actually a whole new server being deployed. We have a system that is set up so when we deploy a new server, it's actually deploying a new instance of the server kind of in parallel. If somebody is on newer stuff and they go into a scene, they'll actually be in a different instance than somebody who's in the older stuff. Uh, but uh, the way it works is we actually keep the two data servers and we can handle the data from either side so we don't have to worry about the weird stuff happening. But you guys don't even notice at all. If you are, if we just publish a server, you, the most common case is you'll see that come up. You can just click you know, ignore it or whatever. And then the next time you zone without you even knowing it, you will be on the new server set. Uh, so again, I know this is stuff you guys probably don't care about that much, but it's one of those like little quality of life things. We don't have to have, we're taking the servers down and doing all these big things. And you know, you're, we're gonna be down for one to four hours or whatever. We can deploy servers and you guys don't even know it really, except for that one message. And I am still summoning some people over here. Uh, just summoned a couple more people. 
we'll see how we do here with the uh, 60-ish people or so with pets and emotes and VFX. <laughs> It'll be fine. It'll be fine on my my uh, 2060 uh, NVIDIA card. Let's see. Uh, oh, uh, Serpent Twine mentioned the one time he said, I have only remember it going down literally once. Uh, yeah, so we've only had the servers actually go down one time, which was, I think Star announced he... Uh, might have confused a few people because he rightfully so throw or so thought it was uh, lightning strikes. We were having a massive lightning storm, but it turned out it was just absolutely a coincidence. Uh, our that we had one box that was dying. Now there may have been some small power surge from the lightning storm that was a thing that pushed over the edge, but that box had been having some slightly off problems for a while, anyways. Uh, but yeah, that was the one time we've had a down outage that, you know, was more than just a restarting something type thing. Uh, and that was me. I think I was going to bed at like 10 o'clock at night when it went down. And I had the fun job of going in and working completely through the night and into the next day uh, without sleep. So, And that was, yes, I remember that well. Ravelox, uh, I keep my phone set on a, the whatever the quiet mode is when I go to bed and I set it by my head on my nightstand uh, so if it were to vibrate I would hear it but I put it in the quiet mode but the rule for the quiet mode is if somebody calls me twice in a minute or texts me twice in a minute then it'll vibrate uh, and that was one of the few times where it vibrated and my first thought was like whoops must have forgot to put it in quiet mode nope bad news <laughs> Uh, but yeah, so that was really the only time we've had, and that was actually an entire server quad node box time. We do have redundancies in places where it's critical, but there's some things we don't have redundancy in just for practical reasons and performance reasons. So let's see. Uh, but anyway, so I guess while I'm talking about that part in the server, again, this uh, stream, I was kind of just calling it, doing it to call out things we've done well uh, and things that we do that's unique. Again, our server stability our lack of significant downtime almost any downtime is uh something we've done really well never a rollback uh if you're one of those people i know we had a lot of people who came from uh, the ultima online world and just other games and basically since the start of the pro project we 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 just don't have rollbacks we haven't had to do rollbacks uh we have done to be specific, we've done one rollback that was about a 15 minute rollback where we did a release. We had our monthly downtime for the release. And then we said, oh, I guess we're done. Let's open the doors. And we opened the doors and then we immediately said, oh crap, we forgot to do this one specific data migration. And so we ended up rolling, said we're gonna do a rollback and we rolled things back 15 minutes to the start of the release again and then did the data migration and then moved things over. So, uh, but also protecting your data. We actually do follow GDPR rules which is uh, the general data protection stuff so if you're someone who's in europe or whatever i don't know how much they really enforce that for companies in america that seems like they haven't done a great job enforcing it last time i looked but just in case we try to stay completely compliant on that we have a system in place for erasing people's data if it's requested uh, we keep all of our private data on absolutely secure servers and then the only thing that is actually on the game server is non-private data. So we actually do a, a pretty good job of that, which a lot of games do not do that. A lot of everybody does not do that. So uh, backups, we're pretty good with our backups in terms of automated backup stuff. So uh, just lots of different stuff like that. But again, we're trying to be, even though we're a teensy weensy little game company, we, we try to be as feel as big company as possible. And that's one of the things I think that we have done exceptionally well on. So uh, let's talk about another one that's uh, important, super important to anyone who's played a lot of MMOs. And again, this is kind of the boring side of things, but it's a boring side of things that if we didn't have this stuff to brag about, you should be scared. Uh, which is in the life of the project, we have never had a single gold dupe and we have never had an item dupe. 
uh, if you want to uh, talk, oh, thanks, Dork. If you want to talk about something that will destroy a game fast, one gold dupe out in the world will de can destroy a game in no time flat. All right, Cowboy Bill's looking pretty big there. Did somebody give him a buff? <laughs> Uh, Joe Novelli, uh, Arcanus, uh, we've had some people getting booted from the, the party. I didn't remove anybody. I'm not kicking anybody as far as I know. I mean, I'm not kicking anybody. I don't think anybody's kicking anybody. Uh, I just summoned you back. We'll see if you stick this time. I think there's a couple of different instances, though, uh, that we I started things off on the wrong foot, and I think I may have created a false instance using GM magic. Uh, and my gut feeling is that some people are getting sucked over there to the other instance. <clears throat> uh, but anyway, so gold dupes. This is one of those things I think people know we have. We try to do a different model because we're an online game, an offline game. We do some more things on our client than we probably should. But the one rule we've always had is everything goes through the server, whether it's something done on the online. Uh, so if the server isn't doing some calculation, it is always doing the, you know, before it matters to anybody, it's going to the server and through the server so that we know about it, uh, so that we can catch and manage things like hacks and stuff like that. Uh, one of the things we never, ever, ever put on the client in any way, shape, or form is any type of transaction, any type of trading, any type of inventory, any type of uh, you know drops, that type stuff. That all happens on the server, that is one of those things. If you want to have, if you want to break your economy fast, uh, that's putting like gold creation or item creation on a server, or putting transactions, trades on a server, uh, because that's when you get into the uh, someone finds the exploit with trades, where they can force you to do a trade with them and take items off of you. Uh, that is a surefire way to kill a game fast. So we do none of that, and as a result, we have had. No gold dupes, no item dupes. Uh, I think I mentioned it before a couple days ago that uh, the closest thing we've had to an item dupe is we had for, a, I don't even want to say an hour, less than an hour during one release, we had something where there's a recipe where it had uh, an exception where you would craft the recipe and you would get the ingredients back, but it was a pretty worthless recipe, so it didn't cause any problems. And we also, uh, another thing we have, which is I always talk about, we try to build lightning shields whenever we can to make sure no, you know, lightning never strikes twice. If we have something that hurt, bangs us once and causes problems, we try to make sure and get either a test in place or some type of check in place uh, to make sure that we don't have that happen again. So again, another thing that we do is trying to make sure the game is safe for the long run, stable for the long run, not going to implode, uh, not going to be uh you know massive exploits uh the mint gold recipe there is a mint gold recipe that was uh again that was when we were still trying to figure things out i think that was one of the ideas i think that may have been a richard idea to make it so players could mine gold and mint gold and they were the only ones creating gold for the economy so yeah things seem to be going pretty well here i just saw a little bit of a hitch going on uh i think the uh all the extra vfx from the fireworks and other stuff, but that's fine. Keep doing them. That's what they're they're there for. Oh, that's good. We got some uh, Rolling Stones going on there. I think. Speaking of music being played. Okay, now you're just now you're just trying to cause problems. We'll see. If uh, anybody gets booted, you can blame whoever's trying to cast the uh, lightning spell to get you guys booted. I personally think it looks pretty cool. But, let's see, uh, but yeah, in terms of trying to feel like a big company, when we are a little company, we are definitely trying to do things right. Again, the company, uh, people at the company, even though it's a small company, there's hundreds of years, literally hundred year, hundreds of years of game experience uh, involved in making the game, so. We've seen it all done before wrong. Oh, good. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see how many people start dropping out here. Uh, I personally have never been booted from the lightning field thing, and I've had multiple clients up running it, trying to cast it on both clients to make sure it wasn't going to cause the problems. But I know some people have had problems with it. 
that is one place I would say we don't do a great job is again our performance it's not horrible uh, but uh, there's lots of places we could be better that is one thing that we're working on as well I will mention places we need to improve is hitching under stressful situations on lower end machines uh, you can get some major hitches on that stuff most of that comes from garbage collection within the engine that we use which are in unity 2018 uh, we are in the process of moving to unity 2021 i don't have a date and we'll get there but again it's pretty close but that does if not 100 percent fix dramatically improve the garbage collection it moves it to an incremental garbage collection system so the hitches that people largely see are due to garbage collection going on in the background basically just memory alex building up and then getting all recaptured at one time uh but anyways, that is in the works and uh, hope to have that done before the end of the year. Do, do, do. And let me see, I have not even looked. By the way, I've been giving away uh, some of my skulls if anybody wants it oh. by the blacksmith and Catholic Coast. Oh, and I, I think I... Are you giving away your skulls? Okay. Well, uh, I think I mentioned before I did not, uh, I've not done a single prizing yet. I'm going to go ahead and do a big prizing here. I'm not sure what I'll do for sure, but let me do, if you guys want to make sure I get raffled up, I'm going to draw it right now. I started saying that before and I gave people a chance to raffle up and then I never did it. Let's see what's on sale. Obsidian three story replenishing snowball box, topiary bear statues. Uh, leather clockwork wings, uh, portrait paintings, leader set that looks like uh, uh, we have Lord British, Dark Star, and Arabella. Where's Atos? <laughs> Where's Sanyo? Where's Sanyo? Where's Ravlox? Uh, let's see, dead trees. What do we have in the from the vault? There's a fishing grotto dungeon. Oh, we got to get to talking about dungeons and inky characters and some other stuff here. Again, I'm trying to make sure we talk about everything. Oh, let me get this summon going here. Talk about all of our unique features as we lead up to our 4 p.m., which is really what you guys are going to be here for, which is there's a lot of surprises there. And that is also the 4 p.m. stream is going to be... Uh, just to pimp that while I try to figure out what I'm going to give you guys. Uh, that's going to be Richard... Lord British, Garriott, Star, Dark Star, or Lord Blackthorn. Yeah, I wouldn't give him the name back uh, long. And uh, I think that's going to be it. We're going to be talking about all sorts of stuff. If you have not seen Richard, heard Richard talk, uh, he is an amazing guy. And I don't think he's in chat right now, or at least I haven't seen him speak up. But uh, he is one of those guys you can listen to. Uh, for hours talking about stuff. Just every bit of it interesting until he turns to talk about pooping in space and then I try to get him to change the subject. Because <laughs> <laughs> he likes talking about pooping in space entirely too much. Uh, but yeah, he was also, uh, I'm trying to think, I think he was on the, yeah, I think he was in, he's in chat, but I don't think he's actually listening. He's got busy stuff to do. Yeah, he would have chimed in now. So I can go ahead and say other stuff uh, good about him too, which uh, he was also, I think he was named to the Maxim put him on the 10 most interesting people to be trapped on a desert island with, uh, which other people in the the list were people like the Dalai Lama. Uh, and I forget who some of the other ones were, but they're all that type of level of like, when you're getting put on a list of you're as interesting as a Dalai Lama type stuff, you're... Uh, you're doing some things right, but he's a guy to definitely listen to. And again, he will be on starting around four o'clock, maybe a little bit later, along with Star. It sounds like Star may run a little bit late, but we'll get him in here as soon as he gets here. And we're scheduled roughly from four to five, but we'll see just however long it takes is however long it takes. And let me do that actual drawing now, now that I've given you guys plenty of time. I'm gonna do something big. You guys have been like insanely generous leading up till now, and I feel like I should be insanely generous back to you. So I'm gonna do a uh, and also, we may have some people out there who have not played the game. 
or have not uh, or just watching the game don't know much about the game so i'm going to give away some deeds so just so you guys know we have another very unique feature we haven't even talked about is our property system you get a row lot deed right away in the game for like basically the first quest uh first scene you can get that when you complete the main quest line you get a village lot deed for free uh, all deeds can be purchased at any time for the, our premium currency uh, but you can also premium currency drops in the game and also you can buy premium currency this is another thing we have unique which is you can buy premium currency off of other players now we did this intentionally which again it's one of those things do you want to does it feel like selling power well, it didn't really feel like selling power it's one of those things we want to do to make sure it felt like we weren't selling power and that players who do want to be generous can buy premium currency and then they can actually sell that to other players for in-game stuff you know trade it for items or trade it for gold and buy other stuff with the gold so it lets players who don't want to spend a single dime play the game as long as they want to without having to spend a single dime uh, but anyways that's one of those interesting things for our economy uh, but today I'm going to give out a how about a we'll do a village uh, where's a village we'll do a uh, a village deed and then I'll give away a nice home to go with it as well what's a nice home there's some homes you can get craftable again that's we try to our store is all stuff that is very much visual stuff uh, it's all uh, you know pretty visual stuff or convenience type stuff uh, mild convenience stuff we try to not do any pay to win by the definition of pay to win that if Someone has spent a thousand dollars in the store. You've spent zero, and you meet them in PvP or you're adventuring together. You're not going to see any significant benefit from having spent a thousand dollars. We would appreciate it if you spent a thousand dollars in the store, though. Let me go ahead and say that. <laughs> nice. Uh, but yeah, you're you're not going to win in PvP. You will. You do have a lot. You can have cooler dance parties. You can have more stuff at your. You know, more people over to your house. You can hold events at your house. Uh, you can have tons of fun decorating. There's a lot of people that's all they do in the game is they craft and they decorate stuff. So let's see. I think today we're going to do, I'll give away for this first one, we'll give away a ring of stones, a village home, and a, uh, we'll even do a place anywhere village lot. How about that? Yeah, I know, it's right? It's funny watching your randomizer on the screen there. My randomizer? Is that yeah, just, your mouse just going my around. swinging around my mouse? <laughs> okay, well, here's the uh, randomizer that is, uh, you can blame Streamlabs chatbot version 1.0.2.64 if you lose. But here we go. I'm clicking the button. You guys ready? Give us your money. Uh, that's another nice thing uh, that I will say about us. Uh, even though, as I mentioned, we try to make sure we are as responsible in doing the things that a big team should be doing and doing things right is every purchase matters to us we're a very small team uh you know you spending buying a hundred dollar crown bundle or whatever uh, that actually makes a very noticeable difference to the team this is not like something where it's like hey they spent uh you know a hundred dollars on the game uh which for this company that has a games budget of 500 million dollars a year i won't name what game company that is but uh but anyways, for us, that makes that's not like a drop in the the ocean. That is a drop in a uh, modest sized bucket, maybe even like a drop in a glass of water. That that makes a big difference to us. So that's the other thing you can feel good about is that any purchase you make that is really significantly helping the team. So, but anyways, I'm picking a winner. Here we go. Hold on, I think I may have done something dumb. I did do something dumb. Uh, you guys might want to raffle up just to be sure. I think I closed the giveaway there last time I went to click on it. Just to be sure. <laughs> I will also say that as well as we do on uh, some things like in the game and trying to be responsible game developers and do things to make sure your data and you know your investments are protected and all that type stuff. Uh, we're horrible streamers. I'll just go ahead and say it. Speaking of being horrible streamers, I will prove that I am a horrible streamer. And I need to also go thank some people here, but I'll prove that I'm a horrible streamer by singing a song here in a little bit. 
You guys ready? Okay, I think I think you guys are all in there. There's like 204. I'm not, I'm not checking my volume right now. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> Here we go. I'm gonna go. Bam! Picking. Who's the winner? Blomikus, or is that Biomikus? My uh, fifty-something-year-old eyes can't quite tell. I think that's blow me a kiss. Blow me a kiss. Oh. Blow no, blow me kiss, dude. Blow blow me kiss is so much cooler. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, is it blow me a kiss? That's all right. At least it's not like uh, Saturday Night Live uh, Sean Connery humor with the uh, uh, therapist <laughs> or uh, whatever other thing there. Uh, anyways, raffle is back open for the next one. Uh, blow me a kiss. Blow me a kiss. Uh, if you want to uh, give me your in-game name, great. If you want to tell me your name later, you can. If you are uh, someone who has never played the game and wants to jump in game, like, uh, you can send support something, or you can tell me somebody you want me to send it to who's in stream here, and I will get them uh, that thing. If he is uh, hot shingles in your area, that's good. Uh, if uh, he does not respond here at all, I'll go search for his name, and if he's not there, then I'm going to add that one onto the next one, and I'll do two prizes, two big prizes on the next raffles. You may have come in early Same. in the stream and abandoned, abandoned ship. Because I don't uh, see him talking. Tank is actually in the scene. I didn't even realize that when I was talking about it before. Who was? Travis uh, added the dunk tank, the new dunk tank that'll be on the. Oh floor. yeah. It's in the. Uh, it's by the. Uh, I guess between the tavern and the what will become the wizard uh, building, magic building. All right. Uh, south, northeast. Stall for one minute here, and I'm going to go search to see if blow me a kiss. Uh, is uh, has a character first time chat from viewer hey thank you very much Al and I there's a ton of people here who follow that's awesome thank you guys so much uh, let me go search for blow Mikas because I may be doing another drawing here new uh, so we will do another drawing there if blow Mikas. Blow me a kiss does not speak Chris, up here shortly. Go ahead. Where, where is that um, New World promo link? Um, Ikondas just mentioned it in chat, and I want to post that into the chat. I can get that. Uh, this was a promo. This was actually, again, we tried to do stuff that people asked for, and this was suggested by several people. But uh, I think I ruffled a few feathers the other day. I tweeted out something about, if you have a friend who quit New World, bring him over to Shroud. Uh, and I thought that was fairly innocent, but apparently that ruffled some feathers. But this was something as we sit here trying to find users, trying to get people in to play our game. We're talking about all these amazing things that we do well. That uh, was suggested, and I agree, great idea that uh, having a link to, like, if you're a person coming from another game, that uh, you can you sign up through this thing you'll get some stuff that may remind you of the game and it also gives you a bundle of experience so you start off with a half million pooled experience which is another thing we got to talk about is our experience system and our skill system so that if you sign up through that link again we're not we've never said anything i don't think we've ever said anything like go steal all the people from the other game or anything like that and we absolutely we endorse and Post links to other people game, other people's games in our newsletters, uh, on our website, all over the place. We talk them up in game. Uh, I've even talked some up on stream in this game. Working closely with the uh, with uh, Crowfall and Embers Adrift and a number of other places, uh, Chicken Waffle, just a bunch of other different groups. And actually, we were pretty close to doing some promo stuff with Pantheon when, sadly, uh, Brad McQuaid, I was actually talking to Brad McQuaid right when that all, the Brad McQuaid stuff happened, which was super sad, which I won't go into here because it's a bummer, and I don't want to bum people out. But anyways, we try to do as much cross-promotion stuff as we can voluntary. 
this was one where I think we looked and we saw there's just a lot of stuff that was going on that there was uh, a lot of things that shouldn't have been going on in the game that were going on in that game that, that should have been better. And we just felt we wanted to give people a home, someplace they can come to where they didn't have to worry about bad stuff happening. Uh, and uh, uh, speaking of uh, Saturday Night Live, uh, gosh darn it, we de we're, is it, what is it, gosh darn it, we, we deserve better. What's the Smalley, Travis Smalley, is that what it was? I forget what it is, but anyways. We deserve some users and we are looking and seeing that it is uh, right now about a million people a week leaving uh, that game in particular. So. And also, I will also point out, they kill our servers. They're the only reason our games go down. And also, we have not been able to run ads for quite a while uh, due to every single ad on the internet being for a certain particular game. So, Okay, I'll shut up about that now. I'm good enough. Doggone it, people nice. like me. More people should like us. So. But uh, let's talk about, as we're talking about unique stuff here, and I'm sitting around waiting for things to crash with all the people doing uh, lightning storms and nonstop fireworks and everybody having a pet out and, and all that. Biomicus in game. All right, I might be intentionally saying that wrong. Uh, blow me a kiss. I will get you something. Uh, I will get you your prizes. I'm trying to find a place to jot that jot that down where I don't lose it. And he's gonna get a PA or a village lot and standing stones to go on it. Uh, I will get that to you shortly after the stream. Oh, they are in Castle Atos right now. I think that that name blow me a kiss. Where's Waldo? Like one of those uh, Simpsons crank calls to Mo. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, help me. Blow me a kiss. Blow me a kiss. All right. Well, my where's Waldo is failing here. Arthur Dimp <laughs> Dimpus, Lilybird. Lich, Bjorn, right? Okay, well, uh, I'm gonna mail him uh, this stuff here after the stream, so I don't see him. Let's tell him to come to you. <laughs> no, I don't want to have to deal with him right now. Uh, anyways, <laughs> let me get an even better prize up here as we're getting closer here. We're two hours into the stream. We got less than an hour to Richard, and I've talked about like one third of the things I wanted to talk about uh, today. Hold on. Here we go. You can probably see on my face light up when I switch over to other windows. I've noticed that on watching my streams. It's like, why did I, my face suddenly get flashed? Uh, but we are going to do for the second round here, we're going to do a town deed and a cool townhouse, which let me pick out the town deed or townhouse we're going to do. This will be for the second one. I'm going to draw that one at 3.30 and then at 4. Maybe we'll do something. Could we give away maybe even a city lot? Oh, oh. Uh, that is one of those things, uh, changes we've made if you haven't been back in the game recently, is we looked at things. Elgarion, uh, you can thank him for a lot of this stuff as he's pushed the hardest on that. Oh, and thank you very much, Lord British Rules uh, and all the other people I've forgotten to thank, but I'll try to thank towards the end of the stream. But uh, we've tried to push down our prices. I think that's one of the things that added a little toxicity to the community early on as we had some prices that felt ridiculous and people would look at it and be like, Bruh, what kind of money grab, cash grab is this? I should point out that they, I think it's now been, I think we're eight years on that we've had a client in the player's hands and we've been live for three-ish years, continuing to improve the game every single release after that. I have still seen people say that we're a cash grab. Eight years. Eight years of development, eight years of actually you guys being able to play the game, and there's still some people out there screaming cash grab. So it's almost like I should just ignore them. It hurts. I'm soft. <laughs> I'm thin skinned. Soon we make our millions <laughs> Thank you, Sewer Suzor. Um, keep going. But yeah. Anyway, so we've tried to, all of our prices have come way down on all that stuff as we've tried to make the game more accessible to larger number of people and make it feel like, you know, 
it's not crazy prices. Uh, but anyways, uh, and I think that has helped some, but again, it just takes time. We got to get word out there, uh, but uh, bring us some users. As always, that is pretty much the only thing we feel like we are missing. And of course, more bug fixing, which happens every release, but that's the uh, biggest thing we, we really want is just more users. Reducing the everything to get more people into the game has always been a goal. But anyways, uh, we're going to do, I think I've just decided that we're going to do a town lot at uh, 3.30, town lot indeed, and then we're going to do a city lot indeed. We haven't done that in a long time. You guys have been super generous on the stream today in terms of uh, uh, donating to the stream, so I'm trying to give that back. Do, 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 but uh, let's see. I have skulls, by the way. I'm by the blackness still. If anybody wants my skull, plenty to give out. Let's see. Uh, and I always try to give out this stone keep. I always try to give that out on stream. Everybody always hates it, though, I think. But today we will give out something a little more uh, interesting. Maybe we'll do a Shogun or Kabold three story. What's a popular one here? Viking. Let's do a Viking stronghold. I like the Viking three story. I like the Viking house. Hey, thank you very much, Thoric. Oh, and I owe you guys some songs here, which I need to do before this gets over. So I need to speed up the, the rate at which I'm talking about uh, new features because we're two plus hours in and we have not talked about fe new features much at all. You just turned daylight. Did you talk about the Sky Dome yet? Uh, you can talk about the Sky Dome there. You want to tell people about uh, the Sky Dome? I don't remember all your points, oh. but we do. We have a, a working Sky Dome in most, uh, nearly all outdoor scenes. There's a few scenes that have specific fictional reasons why the, the sky is. But we have a full day-night cycle. Uh, it lasts for one hour. Uh, 20 minutes out of uh, the in-game day, 20 minutes, you know, out of that hour is it's nighttime and the, and the rest is daylight. Uh, not only do we have like the day and lights, uh, day, night switch, we also have uh, uh, constellations uh, and celestial bodies up in the sky. So you can see the, uh, the, the shattered moon and, and different constellations move across. Uh, and some of that also connects to, uh, oh man, I always forget the name, uh, the astrolabe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, astrolabe. So we have some objects in the game that connect to the, the day and night stuff and, and the, this uh, special properties that they have. And uh, the moon dial too. And the moon dial, yeah. Uh, we also have, uh, this is subtle, uh, but as a spawning guy, I'll mention that we do have uh, some uh, 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 monsters here and there that will only spawn uh, when nighttime comes. So sometimes you'll be like in a graveyard and, and uh, you know, the sun will go down and then you'll realize that there's extra on day left. So, uh, so we, we have time of day, uh, a few time of day spawns that happen. Uh, so it's pretty exciting to me. I, think. I, I love games that have a day and night cycle. Uh, 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 you know, you can see the shadows moving across the sky. You can see the, the uh, sky changing, you know, from the blue, you know, the, the, the and, you know, the, the black. Uh, oh. It's a fictional thing, too. Like, this is a, a little bit of a weird connection, but... So, uh, we talk about the virtues in the game, and it's sort of like a, a <laughs> philosophical or metaphysical... Uh, you know, so we don't have religion in the game. So, we have instead these philosophies, you know, are based around the virtues. And... Uh, uh, we don't really talk about like what happens if you die so much. Obviously, the avatar is uh, you know, resurrecting out. That. But we also like have the characters uh, dwell upon what happens. But in my mind, as the fiction guy, uh, uh, in my mind, the uh, NPCs throughout the world they, they kind of know that avatar uh, have can live longer in, uh, than NPCs in some ways. And so I, that makes them special in the eyes. And then also, like, if, if there's not, like, religion, or at least like, uh, the real world, then, then, then what do they do? Uh, I remember a long time ago, I was thinking, do they, are they, like, ancestor worship? Uh, you, know, did they, you know, if they sort of, like, have to, like, invoke some greater thing than them, like, who, who, do, they, who do they call on? Uh, and then uh, it occurred to me, you know what? It's going to be the stars. So that's why you see some NPCs, especially in the newer scenes, they go like, thank the stars, uh, you're here, or uh, you know, things like that. So you know, the stars are always up in the sky, celestial bodies are, are you know, always uh, there, uh, you know, watching over, and they have an effect 
uh, sometimes in live scenes in the place. Uh, so that is that's kind of like a, a, a loose prediction there, a little. I don't know if it's Easter egg level, but uh, it's a little insight for you. It's, it's the uh, sort of substitute religion for, uh, you know, as opposed to ancestor worship for gods, or even other philosophies other than religions. Like, you know, I tried to keep it simple without being distracting the There you go. And of course, all that leads into also the weather system. Oh, weather. And, uh, Yep, and the the player's ability to modify the weather in certain places, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, in the in the player own towns, uh, which so we, we haven't we mentioned. Have... Player own towns, which is a whole other topic that we could spend an entire stream on. Uh, which uh, I guess I'll go ahead and talk. I'm done feeding my fish now. Yeah, yeah. You may hear them smack a bit in the background, but uh, the fish were getting hungry. They get grumpy. Uh, but anyways, uh, we have a system, not only do we have player housing, but then we want to create the next thing, which is we wanted to have, we feel that player housing that is instanced, which is what almost all other games do, is not very compelling. You, you know, great, you have a house, you maybe you can get people to come over to your house, but unless people are going to walk through a town and actually see your house, uh, it's, it loses so much coolness as soon as, or as soon as it's instanced. So we want to make sure we have non-instance housing. So that means, guess what? We need to have a lot of places where players can live. Uh, and that's one of the things we came up with was like, you know, we don't have the manpower to build towns and, you know, the creativity to come up with like a hundred different cool towns. They're in PC. And we actually came up with the idea. And this is actually, I think it may have been a player request. I think uh, the person who probably pushed for this the most may be around here somewhere, uh, Winfield, uh, where we have player run towns, player owned towns. And uh, this is basically, a, as a player-owned town, this is something you have to pay for, but generally people get together and do it as groups. You can also upgrade through crowns in-game, premium currency in-game, which can be traded. So you can also, like, you know, usually uh, what will happen is that, you know, people in a town will get together and everybody will put together, you know, put in, put in some crowns and upgrade their town and make their town bigger to get more people in there. But as the town owner, the governor, you can actually... Do whatever you want to with your town. You can have, there's a bunch of different templates to choose from in terms of base types, or do you want like a mountain type, you know, with with snow, or you want, uh, you know, one that's just a kind of a standard coastal type town, or you want to have one that's even like in a dungeon, or whatever crazy thing you want to have. There's a bunch of different templates you can have. You can have it in a swamp if you want to. Uh, but then that's just the base type, and then you can go and you can set up where like your NPC stuff is going to go. You can put down all different types of decorations. You can put down the deed markers for where people can place houses and you can set those. So like you can have some like this one is reserved for a specific person. You can just say this one's open. Come take it. Uh, come claim this lot uh, to bring people into your town. But you can also do things like if someone's being a jerk in the town or you need to free up space, you can always like evict people from the town. Uh, you can control things and you can also do as they were saying you can control things like the weather and the fishing selection that you have in a town so you can change things up and change whether the town is pvp uh you know set messages of the day you can put out npcs and different types of uh you know other cool stuff for players uh, and even add uh things like you can add deer to your town or you know city cats or whatever you want to have in the town uh, we try to leave that all up to you and that's another one of those things that no one else has so we just completed a level two so that means we're up to seven prize innings at the end i'm going to be clicking that button a lot that's going to be a long read at the end <laughs> and you guys are awesome there i see uh thoric and lord british rules and lord british rules uh so many people uh, that is something we've been talking about. Serenia Melorian is more types of of houses in the game. We've been trying to, it's just we have this balancing act of, you know, we have a finite amount of uh, resources on the project and where do we spend our time? And that's, I think for a long time, we spent too much of our time focusing on uh, like 
store items and we've been always been trying to lean more towards more content more stuff for you guys that's actual game content more recently but that is one of those things we keep that keeps coming up is we need some more house types uh, we've actually been looking at some art packages that we can take and we can use to create some different uh, types of houses and a whole new set more quickly so we're continuing to look at it uh, and fish tanks is a fish tank guy here uh, I think I mentioned I have about 20 fish tanks I literally do have about 20 fish tanks we went kind of fish crazy during the pandemic just because we're at home all the time so uh, and we breed some fish as well but uh, but uh, looking to get a fish tank that's one of the things I keep teasing is the idea of we have containers where you can do like uh, a music box uh, you know another one of our unique things is you can put wax cylinders of different songs and music into your music box you can play either locally uh, or you can play it for you can set the music for your town but having the same type of thing for a fish tank so you can catch fish and then you put the fish in the the box that's just a container and then fish show up in there huh what do you think <laughs> and yes i think some people might be saying this uh but uh i think some of these people who are having problems they're in single player mode or they're in private mode and you just need to go set to multiplayer mode, and then you'll be able to stay in here. I think somebody's asked me to summon them two or three times. Totally fine. Uh, Joe Novelli, I think that uh, probably you. That's probably if you set yourself to open mode, so you're in multiplayer mode. If not, it's going to try and kick you out. So, uh, Yeah, and that's also, just to be clear, that's also something that is... Uh, only happening because this is like a dev thing because I'm summoning you it's not something that would normally happen if you were normally playing in single player mode everything would be seamless you would never have this I go into a scene and I get kicked it's only because I'm summoning you and you're set to be that so anyways uh, more things that are unique to Shroud oh, this is one that uh, again kind of core we've been talking about a lot of stuff that's really community stuff and man my fish are getting loud back there uh, but our combat system is actually something that's uh, fairly unique in terms of our skill system and combat system. This was uh, that guy who's uh, talking in the chat down there, that Richard guy, kind of gave some early challenges when we were planning and designing. And one of those was trying to come up with a skill that feels more skillful, but also you know works for a variety of different situations or could even possibly work on a mobile thing, but also would work for people who are... Uh, you know, we have a lot of older players who may have arthritis. I personally have arthritis or hand problems or whatever. We want to make sure it worked well for those people, but also still included some skills. So we actually want to come up with, oh, and then also pile on top of that design challenge with, we need a system that is classless, uh, just because that's, you know, Ultima Online and also, you know, Ultima type stuff. It feels like it should have been classless system. We also need it to be use-based. Uh, but don't allow those extra exploits and so that's kind of where we got to we crafted this with the players and our the initial design was pretty horrible that was mine uh, but with players feedback over several years I think we've gotten to something that actually is really both unique and skillful and flexible and is amazing it never would have happened if we had done this development as many game companies have where they basically you know, we got our big budget here and we plan out everything. We got a million tasks. And then at the end of five years, seven years, we just like, but here's your product. Uh, because we've had you guys in the game, playing the game since very, very early on. Uh, so it looks like we're up to seven prize innings at the end. It's a lot of button clicking. Uh, but anyways, but this is where we ended up after tons of feedback from you guys so rather than it just being you are a fighter or you are a ranger or you are you know whatever you can design yourself you can level up any skills you want to we use a system that is use based which for those who don't know uh, is when you use a skill that's how you improve it is you successfully use that skill and every time you use it you know there's it after a certain number of uses it'll go up well, that's how some games have it, but they just have it as a flat use space system, which really means you do stupid stuff like, again, stand in front of a training dummy and punch it a hundred times if you want to level up your punch skill or your brawling skill or swing your sword or shoot your bow a hundred times. You use the same skill on it. Uh, so that gets kind of stupid after a while because it doesn't. it also doesn't feel like you're adventuring. It feels like you're just in there. So we have a system where instead of it just being you use it and it goes up, we give you a... 
when you earn experience from adventuring, from questing, from uh, killing creatures, uh, or there's some items you can use, you'll gain pooled experience. You'll gain experience and pooled experience. And then when you use the skill, all that's doing is it's pulling the experience out of the pooled experience and applying it to that skill. So you still have to adventure to improve your skills, but then you also still use skills. So you can set which skills you want to train or untrain. You can untrain skills. Uh, but you can level them up and we have no restrictions on how many different skills you can have so this leads to the well how do we control people and make you like pick a play style well we do that by you can only have a certain number of skills in your combat deck at one time and again that's what we call them as decks uh, but there's also multiple different ways you can have them but this is how we limit how many things you can do so even though you may know every skill in the game you can't play with every skill in the game uh, because you know you only have so many that you can use at any given time but this is also how you can do things like I want to play a tank now I want to be a blade guy now and be the guy who goes up close to close or hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat uh, and then I also want to be a, a priest you can set up different decks you can set up different gear that goes with them so you quickly swap between I want to play a mage tonight uh, tonight I'm just going to be going out and doing some crafting and I just want to wear my you know my casual gear my crafting gear uh, I want to be doing my role playing I get, guarantee you half the people here have a role playing deck that they have that is showing off their stuff but you can build out these decks store them off and save them so then one of the unique things and again this is comes from player feedback the initial design was that everything would be random and you would like you could do some design on things and put things together but it was really everything in the skills would be random and they'd be coming up and going away and coming up and going away and coming up and going away uh, that was too much for a lot of people even though it does involve a lot of skill it uh it was too much work it was also one of those things where some people their play style is they didn't want to look at the bar and this tends to pull your eyes to the bar if you have something down there that's changing you don't know what's always there so that's where we got to the point where you can lock skills you can lock whichever skills you want to and if you lock them they behave just like a normal uh, any other game where the skill is locked, it's there, you press it, it's always there, and you use it. You can also do things like this, where you build out a deck, and you can say, in this first slot, I only want these skills to come up. And then, once you have those skills in there, then you can add those to your deck that'll get shuffled through. And it actually is doing basically shuffling, just like a deck of cards. And so, for instance, in this build here, I have like my first three slots. I just want to be able to pound one, two, three, one, two, and know that there's always going to be some type of attack there that's uh, close up range. Then for these second, you know, four and five, those are places where I know if I hit four and five, that's almost always going to be a range thing. Uh, I also mix in here. I've got some buffs in here. It'll just show up randomly. But this has some advantages and some disadvantages. The disadvantages, of course, you don't know. You're not ever going to, there's never going to be a time when you're going to say, I know if I hit four, I'm going to get a lightning bolt. If I hit three, I'm going to get a rend. If I hit two, I'm going to get a thrust. Now, the advantage of it, that's the big disadvantage, is you can't always control that. Uh, there are some actually some skills, and a lot of the skill players will use things like there's ways that you can lock it. There's some chaos magic and some uh, uh, little roll through them quicker and then there's some focus magic or focus skills that let you lock some skills in place for a long period of time so even if you're using the dynamic you can build up a set if you want to but uh, the advantage of this is just like skills in most games they have cooldowns to them when you have them in this rolling mode you basically have a rolling set of things so that you can mix up your cooldowns and you have a lot more cooldowns and you don't have to think as much about the cooldowns and it can really be a lot more fast action paced so uh, yes, the Lineman King is rolling deck. I'm using that term now. I will be uh, referring to Lineman King anytime I mention that. Rolling. It's a rolling deck. So this one is actually I would call a hybrid rolling deck, uh, which has a lot of skills that come up, so I can be casting a lot of stuff. Don't have to think about cooldowns much. Uh, but then I also have you know some other things that I know I want to always have in these slots. This is not a very this is not a very good deck. There's whole videos and hours and hours of. Uh, people way smarter than me uh, who didn't build the system like I did, but they played it so much that they know how to really build decks. They can give, there's lots of different threads on lots of different ideas. This is a horrible deck. I'm not sure how I came about having this since the one I was showing. 
But uh, anyways, this is just a good idea, a good example. Another thing this lets us do is have some things that are combos where we can you can combine different skills with a rolling style. If, if uh, at least one of the skills is dynamic, is one of the ones that gets dealt out, and you're not always sure it's going to be there, you can do different things to combine them. You can also combine them as in, oh look, who, who's that that wants to join us? Uh, it's Richard. But anyway, so there's a lot of unique stuff in there. And it's uh, 3.30 now, and I still haven't talked about Player Dungeons, which is one of the things I really wanted to talk about, but we have a special guest yeah. here. You want to introduce yourself, hello, sir? Hello, hello. Can you guys hear me? By the way, I was, I've been noticing on watching the feed, I've get, I get a few glitches every now and then, so apologies if... Uh... It's good he told us that as he glitched. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, good stream, Richard. <laughs> <laughs> All right, look, I guess I can talk about dungeons. Oh, he's back. <laughs> <laughs> I you, was trying to actually uh, say that I've been having some glitches on my internet. Yeah. I even got a notification from Spectrum that uh, uh, they're working on the internet in my area. So apologies if I pop in that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, you literally said, just so you know, I've been having some glitches, and then you pretty much froze instantly in that. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, uh, gotta love uh, I'm sure people would like to talk to you tons more than they'd like to hear me talk. But I did want to just throw in again as we're talking about some of the unique stuff here. Is I know we've got a lot of people, 200 feet, uh, 15 people in stream. I'm sure there's some people out there who are new to the game or never played the game, who are just stopping by to uh, say hi to you. Uh, but again, the skill system is very unique. It also creates for a lot of interesting PvP situations and different, just tons of strategies in the build. Rather than it just being the here's your skills and they go down here in the bar and it's always the same whether you're, you know, if you pick this class, here's what it looks like. If you pick this class, here's what it looks like. You can do whatever you want to, arrange them however you want to, swap them out to other decks. You can also swap mid-combat so you can actually change up strategies mid-combat or adjust. Uh, that's a little less important for PvE, although there can be things like I've got a death magic build. Oh, we're running into undead. Uh, and this, let's see if I can point it right. Yeah, that guy there. Uh, made it a big deal that undead should be very, very resistant to uh, death magic, which makes total sense. So you may want to switch out of your death magic stuff and switch over to your, to your deck that is a fire deck or something. Uh, and it lets you do that, you know, instantly in combat with just a small focus penalty and a little bit of time. So, uh, but anyways, very unique. I will jump into a few more features here as we're running low on time and we're also we're supposed to be doing a raffling about now. But uh, all throughout the player dungeons, we actually have a very extensive player dungeon system. Not only can you uh, have a house that you decorate, but you can set up a dungeon entrance to it. Again, you can get these in-game for free. We do sell some player entrances, but they're all about looking cool more than they are about anything else. It's all, you know, magic books and giant portals and that type of stuff. Again, visual differences rather than being some type of power thing. Uh, but then you can upgrade the size of your dungeon to handle more and more pieces. Now, where do you actually get the pieces to build the dungeon once you have those two things, which again, you can get in game for free or you can buy cooler versions of them, cooler looking versions from us and support the game. Uh, you can actually find them in game. You find recipes for them. You go out and you, you know, harvest, collect granite and other things and you build your dungeon pieces. And we're talking about you build hallways and then each of the rooms uh, and pieces has different connectors to it. You can actually then connect up the dungeon. There's two modes for it, building your dungeon. There's actually, when you're outside your dungeon, you can swap it between build mode and adventure mode. Uh, but uh, I think it's actually called decorate mode and adventure mode. But in decorate mode, you can go down there and you can snap on hallways and you can go and again, craft out these hallways and to build out as big a dungeon as you want to. Uh, you can also find more unique rooms that guess where you get the, the unique rooms from? By finding those rooms in game, getting blueprints from them, uh, and then taking those blueprints back and crafting the room. So you need to find the blueprints and the recipe for the room, and then you can go home and you can craft a room and put that that crafted room into your dungeon. Not cool enough yet? Okay, well, the next thing you can do is you can switch it over to adventure mode, uh, which in adventure mode, you can actually go down there and uh, you can fill the dungeon with creatures. You can go and level up these creatures by actually going. If you have a room that is a kobold room, you can go and kill kobolds elsewhere in the game, 
collect their essences, and from those essences, you can build totems, and with those totems, you can power up those rooms to make even cooler rooms. And they actually drop loot, and they actually drop, uh, give experience. Now, they're apples to apples. If you compare what you would get for fighting a kobold in a dungeon, a player dungeon, versus a non-player dungeon out in the wild, you'll get better experience from fighting the same kobold out in the wild. But it's still a pretty significant amount of dungeon. There's a lot of people actually who they've used this to build. They call them their grinders, I think, is uh, the last time I saw them doing it. Uh, yeah, see, Owsley's saying, I have a 50-room dungeon fully decorated. Some people use it, again, for not for adventuring, but they just use it for, it's a cool space. I can design my own cool space. But yeah, these grinder rooms where people have just basically will get a bunch of dungeon rooms, put them together, that it's just all they're for is like room, room, room. And it's basically just a big loop of, of uh, stuff where they're going through uh, using it to train up friends or uh, just, you know, play by themselves to try and level up. Some but, people even use them in uh, more of a role-playing uh, mm -hmm. scenario where there's uh, quests in their dungeons. Yep. And uh, speaking of that, again, I'm trying to cram through all of our unique features, but we have a lot of unique features. Another unique feature I have, at least I believe it's unique. You guys can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, but you can actually build your own NPCs and program your own NPCs with dialogue. This is something we've been expanding on here recently. And uh, the... Oh, bye, Richard. He'll be back. Uh, but you can actually build your NPCs. You can build your own NPC dialogue trees. Uh, you can do this through an external tool called Inky that we have integrated support for in our game. So you can actually build out NPCs. Uh, we actually just, this release, this last release, added support for being able to save and load flags. So you can have that again use it to write your own quest systems write your own quests where you can have your quest npcs you know know who you've talked to and know what you've done uh, and this is a system that is in place now working i've actually got some people that just requested a change to it so it'll do integers as well as strings so that i just got that in that'll be on qa as soon as i am done with the stream and get done uploading it uh, you can also, I just added emotes to them, although I think the current limitation on emotes is there's a bug with only, I think, the first six NPCs you have on your lot. If you have more than six NPCs, they won't do their, they won't play their emotes, but they can do any of those emotes we were just showing off if they're humanoid type, because you can also have things like a dragon NPC, or you can have a uh, other, uh, an elemental NPC, or whatever type NPC you want. Uh, for players to talk to but if they're humanoid they can do any of the emotes uh with a few restrictions but uh and again tons of different stuff you can do programmable you can do logic in it you can have them be doing math uh, and i'm taking requests each release to expand on that i'm going to be getting some more of those in for uh uh this release oh now i gotta go back and look and see what the question was i use dungeons in the quest I write in the game, and yeah, that's exactly that's that's what it's for. You can actually do NPCs where you have an NPC, and this is as of this release, you can have an NPC in one town that tells you about something that's happening in another town, which may take you to another place, which may take you to somebody's personal dungeon that actually is full of creatures that you have to fight your way through to get to an NPC at the end of the dungeon. So again, part of one of the things we're going for here is you get to it's not just about us crafting the story for you guys we're trying to give you guys the tools to let you craft the story and i think that's something that we do that's very unique uh in the mmo field and i actually know of one other game that actually tried to do player dungeons uh that put them in did them poorly and then pulled them out i think that was dungeons and dragons online i think they had uh player dungeons so uh but ours have been on, they've been tested. We've, there's been a few kinks along the way, but I think we've got most all the big stuff out. Uh, there's a few things like with some uh, nav issues. Uh, but uh, yeah, you can do all that stuff. Neverwinter Nights, that was it. Uh, but yeah. yeah, I'm sweeping through the. Uh, I'm sweeping through all the dungeon rooms and uh, any of the bugs that are in there. They're getting swept away. And if you guys have requests. Uh, this guy right here above me as I'm doing the Hollywood Squares thing and trying to remember which way I point to get to different people. 
Was it Richard and that thing? Uh, but that guy up there is, is uh, working on some dungeon stuff right now and has already made some improvements and will probably be making some improvements. If you have some rooms that you like in game now and like a scene that you're like, this room is awesome. It should totally be a dungeon room. Why can't I make it a dungeon room? Uh, start sweet talking that guy right there with the cowboy hat. Not the crown, but the cowboy hat. Uh, because he's the guy that uh, probably can get that for you quickest. Uh, but yeah, so uh, let's see. We have a whole long list of stuff that we didn't get to in terms of the new stuff. But again, inky guys, uh, building your own dungeons, building your own towns, building your own, uh, you know, your own house, all the crazy decoration for stuff. We haven't even talked about the crafting system. Again, that could be a whole nother stream, but a crafting system where you can advance things just as you go along and finding stuff and ways of you know continuing to power some things up. But uh, we're doing uh, going slow here. I need to get. Uh, let me do a raffle. If you guys raffled up, and there's a ton of people I owe thanks to out there. I see you, uh, Z, uh, always being constructive, and thank you, thank you, thank you for the bits. Anjan asks, where is Castle Atos? Make sure you're raffled up. This one is going to be for the town. The town and the... Uh, I forget which house. Which house did I pick? I picked a cool house. I know it was cool. Only the coolest. Uh, Chris, I have to sleep a little bit. I have to my job for a little while. All right. <laughs> Go take and care I of your. I did a little shuffle there, as you can tell. I actually switched over to using this ah, is my cell Viking. phone that you can see wiggling up here. Whoa! Uh, that I taped to my monitor. Looks good. Um, since, I was getting, since I was getting so many hiccups, I uh, uh, turned off my Wi-Fi, and we're running cell phone right here now. Nice. Okay, so this raffle is going to be for the Viking three-story and a town deed. Be a great way to get started and get into the game. And thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh man, and I'm still, I still owe some songs there. Richard, would you want to sing anything today? How's your singing Dang, voice? Heck no, you, I mean, I just came on. <laughs> you want me to try to sing already? Come on. We Maybe I don't even have my adult beverages nearby uh, to, yeah, to uh, wet the whistle. Uh, let's see. We will go ahead and do the raffle if I can find the right window to do the raffle thing. You guys ready? Here we go. Let's do yep. it. 225 people in stream and almost looks like like 150 or so. Bam, picking. Speaking of Bam, Bama871. I'm definitely gonna need your name. I have no idea. I'm pretty sure you're not named Bama871 in game. Uh, if you are not currently a player of the game, don't worry about it. Make an account, get a character set up, and we can uh, get you hooked up. I will get you your stuff in game once you do. Nothing would make me happier than having uh, someone who has never played the game uh, so they have win. A giant house. Excellent. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm licking my lips a lot here because it's it's actually like in the 30s here in Austin. Or it was in the 30s here that in Austin this morning, so our humidity is really low. Even That's though I have 20 fish tanks here in, uh, I, in New York, it's uh, it's crazy. Eight or something here today. And I've been talking for. Two plus hours, almost three hours now straight. Fast. You've been, doing, been doing good. I've been listening to almost the whole thing. So uh, you did you did a good job. Great job there, sir. Well, yeah. All right. There we go. I'll keep me from licking my lips for a little while here. Uh, well, let's see. I think we hit probably the most of the big stuff there. Again, we got lots of unique features we could probably touch on that we have not even mentioned. Uh, but we're getting kind of close here. I need to sing a couple songs. Richard, do you want to say hi and tell people what you've been up to here? Yeah, Any, any cool stories? Hey, everybody. It's been a while uh, since I've been on a stream. Uh, it's great to uh, see you here. I was actually in playing a game a week or so ago, uh, doing some adventuring uh, with a few of you. But, uh, 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 but, uh, but yeah, I'm up, uh, obviously still here at our New York house. We'll be back down in Austin over the Thanksgiving break to appreciate our our uh our austin uh friends uh and uh, uh yeah so as uh, so i think some of you guys know this this year has been uh, for the next probably two years are, are kind of big explorer years for me I'm, I'm currently 
uh, serving as the uh, volunteer president of the Explorers Club here in New York. So uh, earlier this year, I was already on a stream when we talked about my trip down to the bottom of the deepest point in the oceans, down the Mariana Trench. And uh, I have one coming up now in February, uh, going down to Antarctica, to a frozen sea called the Weddell Sea, where Ernest Shackleton's ship, the Endurance, uh, was sunk and went to the bottom. And uh, uh, Ernest Shackleton and his crew spent the next couple of years taking their way out and managed to survive the ordeal. But this, is, this will be the biggest expedition I've actually been part of, other than, uh, of course, uh, space. Uh, but it's, it's required me to go out and get sort of patient. So, so I am now, as of the other day, I am now a, uh, I have my personal safety training rating. So for going on board wow. a ship to, uh, in case I fall overboard, I know how to write a, uh, a life raft. And uh, I just finished uh, going to the doctor here today to get all my merit, my professional mariners, uh, Coast Guard health certificate, and all these kind of things that, that hopefully say that I won't just drop dead randomly in the middle of a six week uh, expedition. So, um, you know, uh, uh, anyway, that's uh, that's the crazy, the wild and crazy stuff I'm up to. Although, uh, I did get to see a number of you, uh, in fact, uh, I think I saw Galara on the stream. She came by our Halloween haunt here and at our New York home. Uh, those of you who remember uh, the, the way back history, it was actually, for me, uh, haunted houses or trick or treating really, of many haunted houses that some, one of my neighbor, one neighbor in particular, had done back in Houston, Texas, that affected me and wanted me to make me maybe want to make year-round haunted houses, uh, and that's also really what got me started in, in video games. When it, it, and D and D, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, and computer games really grew out of you know uh, Halloween and haunts. And so I, back in Austin, uh, when I had a house way out of town, I did a quite an, a you know a super scary, mostly for adults uh, kind of. Uh, uh, haunted house. Uh, but now that I'm married with kids, we started over again at the younger age. And you might see Kinga or Ronan up here in a minute, my kids, uh, who helped build out uh, a, uh, a, 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 you know, a, an ever-growing over the last few years haunt uh, that's really still trick-or-treating more than a haunted house. But as my kids get older, it's getting scarier and scarier. And uh, we're even now basically, you know, decided to have bailout locations for kids who can't handle it uh, as it slowly begins to grow into our house. So, uh, so yeah, so anybody that happens to, you know, manage to get their way up to New York during Halloween, uh, you are most welcome to come trick-or-treating. Adults and kids are all welcome here at, uh, at our little uh, haunt here uh, in New York. Awesome. That's uh, funny that you had to go and get uh, health approved for a boat. Did you just, you couldn't just say, I, I've been to space. They did a little bit for that to get me in shape. The space doesn't qualify you to be on a boat. No, no. And in fact, I was just down at the bottom of the deep point in the oceans and they didn't demand this for that boat either. But uh, in this case, as remote as the uh, Mariana Trench was, it's 200 miles south of Guam. So if you had a medical emergency, uh, that would be too far for helicopters. So the, you'd, even in Guam, you'd have to spend a, you know, a day or two uh, uh, getting home. But whoops, hang on, my daughter Kinga is calling me. Hang on, I'll be right back with you. So hold on. Oh, that's good. I'll do my singing now. Uh, I owe you guys two songs. I apologize. I expect to see that number of 239 plummet here. As I sing, you can mute for the next uh, minute or so. This has uh, always been the tradition, though, is if people uh, give me 1337 bits, I, I will sing a song. You do not get to select the song, because I at least need to know the uh, melody for it, even if I uh, am going to butcher it anyways. But uh, I will not uh, say who is to blame for this, but it's John Marcus. Hold on, Richard. I have to sing one of my two songs. I haven't had to do this lately, by the way. This is uh, I've been pretty quiet on my... Oh, they're singing. They want. They're making requests now. Leroy Brown. I'll do Leroy Brown for another one here. She keeps mowing and Shandon in a pretty cabinet. Let them eat cake, she said. Just like Marie Antoinette, building remedy for Khrushchev and Kennedy at any time. An invitation you can't decline. Caviar and cigarettes 
well versed in etiquette, extraordinarily nice. She's a killer queen, gunpowder and gelatin, dynamite with a laser beam, guaranteed to blow your mind anytime. Recommended at the price, insatiable in appetite. Want to try? To avoid complications, she never kept the same address. In conversation, she spoke just like a baroness. Met a man from China, went down to Geisha Mina. Then again, incidentally, if you're that way inclined. All right, I'll stop there with the uh, torture. There you go. I'll do uh, some uh, Jim Croce thing next time. Maybe Leroy Brown. <laughs> That will not end up on a wax cylinder. <laughs> All right. Oh, wait, hold on. I, I turned down the volume because we were, uh, I was getting a lot of whoosh, whoosh. Apparently people were throwing bits at me uh, during that whole thing there. So, Excellent. Well okay, that's one. Well I'll do the other one later on. Maybe I can get started to do a uh, duet with me. Uh, and that's also, I should point out, Star did say that he's got something running late. I already gave him an out and told him if he uh, needs to bail today that we will do a Richard stream. He says he will be done by then. Uh, but I already gave him the out if he wanted to. He can bail and we would do a Richard stream now. No, it, without him, it lets me stand here and do the following, which is sit here and say... Obviously, any good players, all of the best players understand that to live a life of virtue is clearly the proper way to, <laughs> to live. And, and while the seduction of the, uh, the, uh, the ideals of chaos uh, might be attractive to some, that they should know that that is, is a path that clearly commonly leads to self-destruction, that instead you should live the life of virtue. So. Uh, and I'm sure Star would want you to know the same thing, too. All right. Well, we got... Uh, In fact, speaking of I chaos... Think Star would, I think Star was hoping that all of you with chaos symbols would return them to Atos and instead request a virtue symbol. I, I didn't get that memo. Um, no, you didn't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think chaos was being underrepresented. So. <laughs> Very timely arrival. Yeah. <laughs> Let's see. I'm trying to turn down my. Uh... And thank you, everybody who's sending me friend requests, by the way, Alex Blaze. I'm just saying, uh, welcoming you. About uh, made about eight, eight or ten new friends here tonight. That I really appreciate it. I'm trying to adjust if my. If you have it, do slash friend Lord British, and um, we will connect. Aha, uh -huh, there's Lucien de Mort. Thank you. All right, here we go. And Dr. Hernbrand. Thank you. And Ethel Wolf. Oh. And it's been a long time since I went and thanked people. I think I'm going to go run through a bunch of those uh, thanking people right now. Man, oh, there's a lot of people to thank here. Got a ton of new followers. I cannot believe how many followers we got here today. That's awesome. Uh, but Twilight Tempest, the Maynard, Spellfire Z, so many times in so many different ways. Thank you very much. Rufus, Torque, uh, Brutus, Lord British Rules, of course. Many thanks for many reasons more than can be counted here, uh, including bits. Uh, Hagop, thank you for the follow. Count Zero, Dysis. Blaze Garcink, Moridi Richie, Right Plan. Uh, oh, we got a raid from him. Woodbow, Stymie LLTS, Puddlefoot, the the Wizard, Calvi, X Carpy, Sterly, Lord British again, Mandalar, Suzer, Struger, Thoric, Twilight Tempest. Man, there's just too many people here to thank. You guys are all awesome. The Maynard, Hollyhock. Uh, I swear that the UPS number I gave you works. <laughs> Uh, I'll, I'll double check it again for you and get you the, the correct uh, UPS number. I'm not going to post it here because it'll show where you live. <laughs> you probably don't want that. Uh, Graceful Bard. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Graceful Bard. You're awesome. Uh, Z again, so many times and too many times to mention there. And Thoric and Waldo and Schmo and Slash Kills and Preston Jong and Eileen Dragonfire again. Also for so many different things. 
Cowboy Bill, the uh, Mandalar again, and I think I'm almost caught up there. Azrael the Wanderer. <sighs> okay, I think I'm mostly caught up. I'm sure I missed a few people there, but uh, that should be pretty good. Turn down you sound the... like that uh, oh, that geez. show, The Magic Garden, when we were kids. And I see Emily and Johnny. <laughs> yeah. And... And Versago 2099. And, and Bah Humbug. Thanks for friending me, Brad Ford. Thank you for friending me. Frida and Willa, also thank you. And the others that I befriended uh, uh, during Athos's speech, so I apologize I didn't get to call you out my name. Uh, and also, I think I mentioned in my tweet for this thing that I was going to try to get this on uh, Facebook Live. I failed. Sorry. I did try to get it on Facebook Live, but I did not. And I'm trying to get this volume thing turned down for that. There we go. Maybe that'll be better. Okay. Nope. Nope. Still super loud. Bridge troll. How to be a friend. Aha. I bet that's it. Psilocybin. There we go. Love your name. Now I got it. <sighs> All right. Uh, so officially, the stream starts in three minutes. Excellent, good timing. Uh, so I think we can go ahead and say again, we're going to be waiting for Star here for just a minute. We may need to send him. I think the link's up there; you can find it. Uh, but uh, he'll be joining us to do some stuff here. And be uh, all right. we have you guys have. Do you have any script, or do you guys uh, have the names out there? I don't say the names out loud yet. Yeah, that's, um, we actually have um, the uh, there are four people who are going to be joining us on okay. stream as well as in game, um, <clears throat> and those players uh, I'm going to be sending them a link to the um, to the uh, Google Meet in a second here whenever we're ready to actually do that. Okay. Uh, although Stephen, I must say I have a list of three. Right, yes, friend. the uh, the fourth person I sent you an update. Uh, check your uh, email. Oh, very good, thank you. I'll check that now. Yeah, if you can't find <laughs> it, let me know. All right, well, and we will get them. Yeah, you can just send the link and I'll uh, prove them in there. Uh, and uh, if Elgari and I aren't taking place, we'll hide ourselves or whatever so that uh, they can be bigger on camera with Richard. Uh, but uh, we can do that in just a minute. Uh, let's see. Well, we just talked for three hours straight on stuff as people are saying, Chris is licking his lips a lot. and. Yeah, I'm gonna be doing some more chopstick here. Try to keep my lips from splitting as I'm talking to you guys. Do we have any other big and stuff we want to talk about now that we have Elgari on here? Do you have any items? I know we just um, did a stream. I guess I could talk about the stuff I was working on yesterday with the the VFX concept. Okay. Yeah, you want to mention that real quick, and then we'll get back to giving Richard some time. Sure. Um, so when it comes to the Dread Artifacts, which of course you guys have been able to get for quite some time because that was the end of Episode 1 stuff. Um, so stuff like the, uh, the Scepter of Dread, the, uh, the Bone Steel Crown, the, the Heart of Sorrows. Uh, well, I was in the progress of making those one, uh, making decorative versions of them. And you guys are really going to like the Heart of Sorrows one because it uses some of the uh, artwork from the original Heart of Sorrows that's not present on your neck version. Uh, neck version is actually just pure VFX because obviously, you know, neck pieces in our game do not have a visual. Uh, so all it does is add a VFX to your character. Well, so I'm making decorative versions of those and uh, Damon hooked me up and showed me that original art and changed what I had going on for the, my first version of the Heart of Sorrows deco version, which is way better. Um, uh, his, his version is, you know, with the original art. And well, it kind of dawned on me, this is kind of cool because I was working on patterning concepts for him as well. So you guys can, uh, uh, if you've completed the quest, you can, uh, you're going to be able to obtain a, a recipe uh, to uh, study these um, dread artifacts. The recipes will describe all oh, these recipes are just far too complex to understand, but you might be able to figure out how to make some sort of limited pattern for the item. And then you'll take the, the the dread artifact. Well, actually, you don't need to technically take the dread artifact there. You just have to have a complete quest. Uh, once you have the recipes, you go to the um, um, 
the Obsidian Forge and the powers there will help you determine how this item might have been made, help you understand the recipe a little bit more, and then boom, but all you're able to make is a pattern to kind of duplicate the look and feel of the object, but not actually have the true power of it. Because uh, that was, you know, powers well beyond any anything that we could create. And um, so then, boom, yeah, of course, you'll be able to pattern these as well. Um, well, introduce kind of a neat concept is because now we have a neck piece uh, that produces unique visual uh, VFX for your character on your upper body area around your neck. You know, it looks like two hands coming down that are kind of strangling the, the essence out of you. Well, um, it's, it's going to open up a new concept for uh, uh, a new way to customize your character because uh, I'll be coming up with a bunch of VFX patterns that attach to the next slot. So things like glowing eyes, you know, you'll be able to get stuff like that. Um, and then we'll have some that are, you know, available in the world, but the vast majority of these, this will be a pure vanity item. You know, majority of them will be on the store, you know, for that's how we, you know, pay the bills, of course, is give you guys a way to pay to look pretty. Uh, well, they're going to look pretty badass, so I think you'll like them. And um, I don't know if I'll have any done for our ninety six as a short cycle, but maybe our ninety seven. And at least the dread artifact stuff will be in there, and you can at least apply those patterns, uh, that kind of thing. Um, so yeah, that's coming up. And then I'll use any sort of slot that doesn't have a, a visual representation on your character could eventually get this type of concept too. Like rings could uh, give you unusual VFX in the arm, uh, arm center area and belts maybe the lower body area and that'll just be kind of a concept that you guys realize that you can customize vfx for your characters as well i'll try not to make them too flashy because i don't want to just be walking around looking like a big giant vfx monster but you know you know just a way to kind of add a little bit of flair to your character that sounds cool oh yeah glad you like it yeah it should be a little bit of fun all right let's see uh, and I think I actually mentioned in my tweet that I was going to do some ask a dev, get an answer stuff. I never got to that. I'm sorry, guys. Uh, that means that I will have to do another stream. I'm not sure when I'm doing it, but apparently if I send emails for streams, uh, a lot more people show up as I've uh, seen. I'm sure you guys, uh, a lot of people showing up for the stream and also for the zone has nothing to do with Richard being here too, right? Yeah, hang oh, on again, I... guys. Oh, Richard's out of here. Okay, I'm going to do the second song. And since we got a third song, I'm going to sing you guys out on the third one here. While well, Richard is uh, dealing with, I'm going to guess, with Kinga issues, uh, his daughter. My daughter's been amazing here. Is she even here? Uh, I'm going to do the uh, requested song here, which I've done before. Oh. Which I'm back. Sorry about that. All right. Well, I got to do my requested song here that's already been paid for. Uh, and then uh, this will be the last song until the end of the stream when everybody else is done here. But this one was uh, requested by name so i will go ahead and do it because it's one i've done before that i like well the south side of chicago is the baddest part of town and if you go down there you better just be aware of a man named leroy brown now leroy's more than trouble you see he stands about six foot four all the downtown ladies call him treetop lover all the men just call him sir and he's bad Bad Leroy Brown, the baddest man in the whole damn town, a badder than old King Kong, meaner than a junkyard dog. Now Leroy, he's a gambler, and he likes his fancy clothes, and he likes to wave his diamond rings under everybody's nose. All right, well, that's I'm gonna stop there because we got other stuff to talk about in Richard's here, and I'm sure Star is just about to be here. Uh, but I will give a, we'll do one more song there because I think Versago did 1337, but I'll do that to send you guys out before we raid somebody. Ooh, wouldn't you like to be the person who gets raided tonight? <laughs> uh, let's see. Sorry, I'm just catching up on chat there. Thank you very, oh, that was just you, Richard. So that's 100 bits for me stopping early. <laughs> Had to mute it, Baragon, you hate her. Wait until you see what I do at the <coughs> end. Uh, but let's see, we 405 Richard on our uh, star. I haven't seen any update from him, but 
Uh, let's see. Richard already gave us your quick update. You got any other stuff? How's uh, how are the kids? You haven't had any updates. Are we to keep uh, hoping you're gonna get down here? Oh and yeah, get the well, kids yeah, my kids getting big. Your kids must Maxine must be getting pretty big too. You might see mine uh, joining here in a little bit. They're uh, uh, both. Uh, Ron just got home from school. I heard him trade Santa Kinga. Uh, will be here soon too. So I'm oh, anticipating yeah. you'll get a chance to see them here on the stream. Uh, you know they're doing good. You know as with every part of the world we as i suspect you are, are still struggling through how to keep kids in school in the in the in the oops hey look my my cell phone is slowly dropping off the wall and uh <laughs> uh the uh uh so here, here's the fancy tape with which i'm holding my cell phone <laughs> to the top of my monitor so i'll just add another layer there the professional streamers and, uh, <laughs> uh, with my extra fancy uh, method of uh, camera management uh, but, uh, uh, but yeah, no, so we're, we're still struggling through, uh, you know, kids getting in school, out of school, somebody in their class, uh, you know, rates positive and they send them all home. The buses still largely aren't working. So I'm the bus driver in the morning and, you know, doing all the COVID tests, but very excited, obviously the kids, uh, now can finally get the shot because, uh, we're going to take them out this weekend and stick them full of holes. Awesome. Maxine gets hers on Thursday of next week, so she is excited. Yeah, we, we actually did not, we brought her, kept her home the first year just because things were really chaotic here. Uh, we have some schools right around here that were at 20% of the kids had already been infected. Uh, and also uh, because I did the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which is turned out to be something like 3% effective now, basically based on how it is. So. Uh, but we, we kept her home just, uh, we did homeschooling the first year and then she did so well. We've just been homeschooling since. My wife and I are both working from home. So we've got her home and she's been reading, she reads like 40 books a week now. It's insane. She just uh, took a test and she uh, placed it uh, freshman level college vocabulary. Uh, what? <laughs> she, she's reading insane outrageous. amounts of, uh, of books. So. We were not too surprised by that, uh, but she's doing like so good at homeschooling. We're probably, we're just trying to figure out how to reintegrate her at some point, but we got to get her her social stuff, but she's doing uh, amazing. I'll get her in here at some point. Are you well, teaching? Are you trying to tell us she's a big old nerd? You know, kind of she, like is, she is the, uh, <laughs> the glasses wearing nerd. So uh, have you started teaching your kids programming yet? That's the big question. Oh, Kinga has already been releasing Roblox levels of her own of her own creation. Oh wow! And uh, and she's making videos with um, what is this gotcha life and other kind of cutting things and doing all the these challenges on whatever the kids are using whatever those whatever that newfangled social media thing is the kids are all using. Uh, anyway, she's she's uh, she's up <laughs> to making stuff and TikTok. That's the one. <laughs> she's taking the, she's doing all the TikTok challenges and uh it, and, and at first when she was making gotcha characters i was like one like okay well i can't really tell if this is ever gonna end up anywhere good because it's uh, you know so far just paper dolls that you know i, I wasn't too excited about or I wasn't unexcited about i mean just they just didn't uh, speak to me yet but then when she started putting them in animations to music now i'm going okay now she's actually yeah. You know, gonna give gonna give our artists a run for their money because uh, you know she's uh, she's made she's picking songs with plenty of uh, of explicit lyrics for whatever reason so they're not things we're letting her post but maybe to the team I'll I'll share it with you guys here <coughs> uh, on Mattermost and you can uh, see these uh, things she's putting together which are really they're really pretty pretty good I gotta say cool. Yeah, Maxine wants to do stream, and I still have not really got her set up for stream. She's been playing, she's been programming Python and uh, doing uh, Minecraft stuff mostly, though. So, no Roblox, not for Maxine, not yeah. yet. All right, well, uh, let's see. We still have no star. Uh, and we're, I'm using my cell phone as my camera today. For those of you that weren't on earlier, my uh, uh, Spectrum Internet has uh, been uh, glitchy, so when I'm watching the game or the stream, I was getting you know, uh, 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 hiccups in it. There were multi-second, 10-second long hiccups. Uh, even got mm -hmm. some messages directly from Spectrum uh, that they were working on the cable in my area. So I switched to my cell phone for the camera, and, uh, uh, 
I turned off my Wi-Fi so that I at least have a stable connection. But that means I, I can't text Star very easily. Oh, I see. see uh, well, he's he's been chiming in. He's in. Uh, he's got a thing. He was doing a demo that's going long, but he's going to jump in here shortly. Uh, I know one thing I can do that is this is just this will be the last prizening, not prizening. For those who don't know, our prizening is the to get in that you have to say uh, pumpkin spice and everything nice in game, or you can go buy something. Uh, go buy uh, something from the Crown Store. Uh, but uh, this is the last prize I'm going to do as a raffle. So if you've not raffled up, make sure and do raffle here. Because this is the big one. This is uh, at the end of the three-hour stream. We gave away a village lot, a town lot. We're giving away a city lot and house. So this is, this is uh, as big a giveaway as we ever do. So get ready. Uh, Leagues Along uh, won the last one. That was Bama871. He got to me. I did get his name in case you were worried about that. I'm sure you were all real worried about that. <laughs> and make sure I got that one down. Uh, yes, and I will be getting you guys your prizes right after this. Uh, we will do at the end of the stream, the very end of the stream, when we're all done with the, all the other stuff, we will do the prizening. That's the one that is the pumpkin spice and everything nice that you say in game. And, uh, but we, I think we give away, we're going to do like seven rounds of that because of all the uh, hype trains we've had so far. So over the hype last train. Did somebody three. say hype train? I mean, I better cheer some bits. Get I, that hype train going. The, <laughs> there's some time limit thing. There's like a cooldown. I'm not sure if you'll be able to do it again. You're welcome to give all the bits you want. I mean, I'm not, you guys can all give bits if you want to try there. Uh, but right now we're going to do the giveaway for the city. This is probably the biggest uh, prize giveaway we've done in a long time. I'm waiting to see if uh, enough other people chime in so we know for sure. But you guys ready? Raffle? Here we go. I'm going to click the button and I throw my hands up in the air so I'm not doing anything. Spry one. Spry one. You, sir, are the biggest winner ever in the history of anythings. Who are you, Spry One? Are you Spry Space One? Hey, Waldo. Okay, Waldo just gave uh, 2,000 bits and it did not uh, trigger, so I'm going to guess that uh, it's not, the hype train is not cooled down yet. Yeah, I noticed it didn't do anything either there, too, so. Uh, it yeah, may by the end there, but. Cool down works. I'm going to have to give me some advice. Hey, lucky here. Hey. Here's Mr. Ronan, the mathematics expert of the family, coming to join the stream here for a minute. Can we throw questions at him? Absolutely, you can throw questions at him. Ready? Can you can answer some questions? I'm okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll resist. Oh. What, Dad? You're going to have to have math off sometime with Ronan. Can you put your tongue in your mouth? I. So, this is uh, pretty much uh, uh, how we roll here. I see Ronan shows up looking nice. Looks like his hair is done. He's wearing a nice collared shirt. Here's Maxine with her tongue sticking out, her headphones on, her hair's ready, and she's still wearing pajamas. Oh, Dad! <laughs> she's still wearing pajamas, so. I always no, wear pajamas. Who did that? Except when we go hiking. This guy, okay. Scarface, he's juggling too. Oh, all right. He's juggling. Give me some room here. Something else. Oh, okay. He's got a flaming top hat. It's kind of cool, huh? Uh -uh. Can you yeah. Can you in your pants? Yeah. There you go. Get off. Right here. Just like, right there. <laughs> it's left mass, but. Let's see. All right. Well, we're 15 minutes here. How much more time That's do we want to give, uh, give the star before we uh, start without the star? Oh, I think we should start without him. Where's your demon? All right. Uh, <laughs> Steven, do you want to? Are we relook? Are we relive uh, that? Are we relocating to Arabella's castle, or are we going to have the ceremony here? Uh, we could do it in Arabella's castle. Uh, it's uh, probably going to be better lag than... Place to another. Are you sure, sure you don't want to just do it here? I mean, if, 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 we can yeah. do it here. Are we at risk of everybody not being here? <laughs> uh, no, they, they could. Uh, I think they can be here. It's. Uh, I think there were about 85 or 90 people in here last. Uh, but it seems to be holding up pretty well. Only a moderate amount of uh, 
fireworks and spell casting going on. So uh, you can't so, just wander in here, though. So I'll remind people: if you want to get summoned into here by us, you can mess, you can whisper Sanio or repeat us, and we'll pull you into this special scene that's not available yet. All right. Let's see. I'm gonna go up here. I'll go to the. Uh, how do I even get to that? Spot up there. And I'll remind uh, people also that if you have not yet typed slash friend space board space British, please do so because I would love to be on your friend well, list well, well. and have you on mine. Looky uh, here. Got to 20 new friends today and uh, 20 or 30 new friends today. And uh, uh, once you're on my friends list, that means you see you whenever I pop in. Hi, Kite Starwind. And um, and that way, um, oh, when I pop in, you'll see that I'm there, and I'd love to go out and adventure with you when I get into the game. So, happy to join you. There we go. And uh, you know, and I was, and as I was saying, you know, that Star Long guy, he absolutely wants everyone who it was following Chaos to give up Chaos and instead uh, decide <laughs> to follow the paths of virtue uh, forevermore. And I know that is exactly. What he wanted to say. Oh, look, you're Star. What? Oh, should, should, uh, you obviously didn't see me. Obviously <laughs> not. Or you wouldn't have said those terrible, terrible things. Terrible? That wasn't terrible. I, I thought I was representing you quite well. Uh, yes. Uh, we all know chaos is the way. And, and, the, and for those of us who enjoy free will and freedom. Uh, yeah, so if, and if it choice. chaos often goes beyond that free will. It's a path that can lead you into darkness. Only by a virtuous foundation can you truly live a life of, of happiness and joy. Sometimes a little darkness is a good thing. Black is an excellent color, as you can attest to. Yeah, so I do, in fact, enjoy my black. That is, yeah, yeah. Well, on that so, we can't agree. Yeah, so. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll agree with that part for sure. Excellent. All right, well, I've gone. Time to see. It's great to see all these faces. Indeed, likewise. And uh, I don't know if you're powering up the game there, too, but we got, uh, uh, you know, uh, 250 people on the stream. And what? Looks like a comparable number uh, in the room here. Oh. So uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a happening place in time. <laughs> uh, so I came up to the place that overlooks the crowd so that I can summon... We can do the uh, the things up here. Now I'm not sure if uh, the we're actually going to have the people in game and me summon them in game, or are we just going to get them on the stream? Yeah, both. Both. I see. As I get a connection. I'm, work I'm working on getting connection uh, the, problem. Uh, links <laughs> to out the players to join into the stream as well, and I'll pull anybody who's not currently in the scene into the scene. All right, well, there's uh, one person. I'm going to admit them to the call. Oh, oh they look like a wall. <laughs> yes, or a ceiling. Or a ceiling. <laughs> I think that's a ceiling. They're there, but can they speak? <laughs> oh, they can't. You got to stay quiet, little girl. Sorry. <laughs> we got anybody else here? I see a hand. <laughs> oh. Close, you haven't heard close. him talk yet, though. <laughs> okay, you can't keep from laughing. You gotta go. Right. Testing, testing. Pass, now pass. Hear you. There we go. Perfect. Yay! Who Can't is Jason nine nine nine? They live somewhere uh, cold. That's this is great. brown coat, Jason. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, that's uh, Ampu. Yep. I have no, um, brown coat. I, yeah, uh, I have um, Brown Coat Jason invited and Bridge Troll invited as well. They're on their way. <laughs> All right. Um, Here's a Randy Cooper. And the Collis. That looks like a Bridge Troll to me. Um, Although we can't hear or see a Bridge Troll. <laughs> Oh, Randy Cooper is presenting his his chat there. Oh my goodness! Unpinning you. <laughs> There's a Randy Cooper, and you got a screen up there too. Do you mean to have a screen? I'll remove your presentation unless you have a reason for it. 
it wanted me uh bridge troll wanted me to fill out a do i want to report you for a an abuse to uh google i i chose not to i selected no just so you know what's an abuse <laughs> you're gonna talk you're monkey Oh, we got one more here. This one is an easy one. This one is Ehondis. And then we have a brown coat Jason. Oh. And I'm going to drop myself out here. Not pin myself. I'm going to minimize me. Bam. Hey, Star Wars. There we go. Uh, blathering on getting stuff uh, going. We were earlier talking about the project that uh, was uh, holding you uh, off site a little bit here today. Uh, oh, yeah. And Stephen put up a, a link to the place on the soda page uh, where uh, kind of linked to some of the video clips uh, of what you're working on. That looks really cool. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's a lot of fun. So uh, what, when uh, when will the general public get a chance to dive in? Uh, so they're selling tickets now. So you can go and buy a ticket. Uh, opening day, I think, is December 4th. Uh, so I'm flying out to London to the studio uh, the 14th uh, for final dress and tech rehearsals. But uh, but you can but you can connect to it from all anywhere. Over, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You okay, can, so we don't have yeah. to all fly to London. So No, yeah. you don't have to fly to London. Uh, so that's, okay. a, that's kind of the neat... Uh, thing about this this is the first time so secret cinema normally does these big in-person uh, events uh, yep. so they did one for stranger things and blade runner and star wars these big like big rent out yep. like a warehouse or a big uh, arena and then they do these uh, kind of right up your alley kind of larping things yeah. like the yeah. casino royale one was like this giant casino and you like while you're sitting at the Crap table, like you feel like they're like a silver briefcase, like nudges your foot, and, and you get a note delivered to the man in blue, and then there's like a shootout, and like a big helicopter, like they actually have a real helicopter land and like pull the guy out in the middle of the show, and like it, it crazy, like super stunt, and uh, uh, like Stranger Things, like they built Star Court Mall, uh, and so you go in and like uh, they have like wire work, and so like. Uh, the, the actress playing Eleven like floats up and like all sorts of like really cool shit. So, uh, but this is like a way for people to experience because like the, the shows are only like in like mostly in London, but they've done New York and LA. Uh, but this is a way for people to experience it no matter where you are. And uh, it's about Ghostbusters. And I can't say much more than that. Uh, oh, I can it, tell you a little more than that. It has to do with the gates of Gozer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Uh, but it's very, very cool, and uh, we don't know of anything quite like it ever been done before. So very cool, um, very cool, and it's been uh, very fun to work on. And uh, you know me, I like doing things that no one's done before. So it's uh, it's cool, and so yeah, uh, we'll they'll probably start to the previews start in the next couple of weeks. So then people will get to start seeing more information about it and details and things like that but that's uh, that's about all i can say for it right now but it, it's it's cool it's very different very very cool indeed yeah okay who are we missing at this point we have uh Hunter i think you have everybody connis and jason everybody's here uh, I think everybody's here. Uh, and also, I saw some people saying that they uh, went, when I summoned them, they went to a different instance. By the way, I hid myself so everybody else could be visible. But I summoned them, they went to a different instance. That is because the scene is capped at 128 players, and there's 128 players here. Uh, so oh, it, okay. it will summon some, but we're kind of at the limit in terms of players here. So we may not be able to get uh, our actual people in there. But... Anyways, there's 128 yeah, players down there, so they've not managed to uh, crash me out with all their pets and all of their VFX and fireworks and all the other stuff going on there. So doing pretty good, except for that person who's actually exactly on top of me. Who is that? Oh, I think they their uh, matchmaking preference also needs to be open, I think. Some yes, that's, that's been... Net block. Yeah, open mode. Yeah, you've got to be in open mode, not uh, single player mode or party mode. You got to be open mode when I summon you, or else you'll get kicked to another instance. So, and uh, let's see. Do you want me up there with you? Uh, you can oh, come. That? You can come to uh, me. I'm. You just teleport to Atos. 
Yeah. So yeah, do, do you want to go all the way up there. there, or should we do it on the stairs where the crowd can be around? Yeah, we can just do it uh, down there. Right back down here where I am? Yeah, I'm just yeah, going to be right doing streaming. I'm okay. actually going to take a quick... I'll stay right here. Quick uh, potty break in a minute. Oh. Something got slow on me there. Okay. There we go. I'm going to be doing some uh, camera work uh, slewing around here. So you go wherever you want to. That looks like a great place right down there. And I'll just have the camera set up there to watch. Very good. And I'm turning things over to you. I'm going to go uh, take a quick uh, <clears throat> potty break and get a drink here. I've been talking and uh, drinking the whole last three hours, and I need to well, take here, a break. Let me, let me, so you guys uh, take let over. Let me speak here for a little bit. And uh, first, uh, let me uh, uh, thank Star, Dark Star, uh, for joining us also today. Uh, thanks to everybody on the team that's been keeping the game uh, cooking along so nicely. And thanks to all of you in the community uh, who have... Uh, you know, continue to uh, show support to the team and the project and, and each other, you know, to, uh, to really uh, uh, keep this moving so healthily uh, forward. It's very, very exciting to, uh, uh, to, to feel, uh, you know, the, uh, this community, feel the love of this community uh, for, for each other and, and for this project. Uh, that, that really is a project that all of you willed into existence uh, uh, that we all willed into existence together. So uh, many, many thanks. You know, there's the, the reason we're here today, uh, of course, is to give out a few uh, awards, specifically an award that we call the Order of the New Britannian Empire. And uh, for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, it is something we've done since the very earliest days of the game to find a way to, to take those individuals uh, to call out, to point out, to thank those individuals who, uh, you know, while, while frankly we owe a debt of thanks to every person who's here and owe so many more, uh, there are definitely individuals that stand out for uh, how much they've done in support of the project and this community. <laughs> and, uh, and, so, and we don't do this very often. We only get together to do this maybe once a quarter. Uh, we only identify a few people uh, in total, and so the total number of people since inception that have received an order of the New Britannian Empire is still, you know, measured in you know a, a few tens probably. I don't have the exact list in front of me, but it's a very modest number of people. And so uh, I would like to argue that that this is a, that I think it's a really it's a big deal. We're really we're we're trying to say thank you in a big way to the people who deserve big thanks. And so uh, 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 we have four people here today that, that we really want to, to thank. But before I bring them up individually, Star, is there anything else as a kind of a preamble uh, that you'd like to add to that? Uh, no, I, I, you said it eloquently. I, you know, we, this entire project has you know, been built by this community. You know, I, I, one of the things I always like to say is, you know, to everyone to sort of take a moment and look around the game and look at the the clothes you're wearing, the armor you're wearing, the the awesome sword you've got in your hand, the 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 house you're standing in that you've decorated yourself, the the NPC that you scripted to say the cool things, but you all made that happen with the power of this community and Yes, your direct monetary support, but all your direct effort and the awesome events you run. So you, you know, this has been a crowdfunded, crowdsourced, crowd created, community created project more than really I, any project ever, honestly. Um, so, and this this award is kind of uh, you know uh, one of the things we like to do to formally recognize the leaders of that amazing community that really made this project happen. So uh, thank you for being like one of the most amazing online communities there is uh, and uh, and making the thing that you're participating in happen because it really was you that made, yes, we developers did some work too, but you, without your support and love and work and effort and uh, patience. None of this would have happened. Yeah, and patience. Lots of patience. Lots and lots and lots of patience. 
so thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, yeah, thank you, Star. And uh, okay, so let's dive right in. And so the the first person I would like to call forward is actually someone who has already received both their virtual as well as their physical uh, uh, ONBE. And his phone isn't much better. <laughs> Chris, you came in and you froze him up. Take that, Richard. <laughs> it's just, what'd you do? Well, we, we could do, well, he's, while we're, he's coming back, we could do this. Um, so, uh, hear ye, hear ye, hear ye. Come forth, citizens of New Britannia. Lord British, Lord British wishes to recognize some of his citizens. Will the following please come forth? Anpu. Brown coat Jason, Ikondas, and um, Bridge Troll, kneel before your Lord and be prepared to receive his bidding. Now we just have to wait for Richard to come back. He's back. We just can't hear him. Nope. <laughs> ah, here we go. Now you can probably hear me. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I learned a very important lesson. Taping your iPhone to the front of your monitor to use it as a camera will overheat it. And uh, <laughs> uh, and so uh, uh, apologies for that. And, and further apologies if the hiccups I was having on my internet uh, now instead cause a, a different form of problem. Uh, so uh, really uh, apologies there. <laughs> right at the uh, pivotal, pivotal moment. Uh, but as I was saying, is uh, this award is not only a, a virtual award that your character gets in the game, uh, but it is also a, a physical award. And our first uh, recipient, Anpu, uh, already received both of those, but was unable to attend a ceremony like this where we got to uh, 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 you know, uh, bring him forward in front of his peers, in front of our peers, uh, to, to recognize his great contributions. Uh, and so, you know, Anpu, you know, you, as, as you know, and I think many of the others in the community know, you know, you've been extremely active in assisting, you know, both players, uh, assisting new players, both on Discord and by creating an amazing set of tutorials, walkthroughs, and keeping the Soda Wiki up to date, which is a, you know, a, a never ending task. Uh, all of those are often, you know, quite thankless tasks. And, uh, uh, and, and we want to, And he's got. Hey, um, brown coat Jason got booted from the instance. I'm trying to get him back in. <laughs> and so, thank you so very much, and we really, really appreciate it. Hey, thank you. This is a great honor, and I'm just very, very happy to help and assist everybody in New Britannia. This is a great game. Thank you. No, no, really, thank you, and um, I hope you, uh, you know. I hope we get uh, some live events, maybe at an upcoming Dragon Con or other convention, to get a chance to see each other physically, shake hands, share a drink, uh, and, uh, uh, and and see these uh, you know, worn in person. Uh, but obviously, uh, in the meantime, uh, virtually we'll we'll have to do so. Thank you. Uh, thank you. And uh, uh, and now, if if, if there, he's not already up here, uh, I see the only person I don't. Lock up again. Mm -hmm. So uh, you know the the, er, the very earliest days, uh, and and one of the things that you have done, you know, uh, amazingly well for again an incredibly long period of time is assisting with the bug triage. Uh, you know, for those who haven't ever done that, it's it's both a joy and a pain to get a chance to step into the you know pre-release versions of the game uh, or the release versions of the game, go in there, find bugs, really report them properly, triage and test them, be the uh, you know, a bug moderator and on the bug, bug brigade. Uh, you know they, uh, they parse through you know, all the bugs that are submitted by players, verifying that these issues can be reproduced before then the team, Goes uh, uh, before they're then entered in for the team to track down, you know, with our bug tracking system. <laughs> uh, 
I keep hoping he'll freeze on like an embarrassing frame at some point. This is getting a little better, but I think we can still do better than this if we get lucky. What do you think, Seth? No, that's... Did we lose him completely? Is, is, is it because I showed up and it's like the chaos? Yep, is this, there he is. My, He's is back. This my fault? It's my fault because we're introducing chaos. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Can you hear me now? Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. Oh, very good. So, uh, uh, Ekondas, uh, again, sorry for the hiccups uh, mid-discussion, uh, 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 but, uh, uh, but hopefully uh, you understand how much we, we really great. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, being part of this community and being part of this game since probably I think I joined around 2016. I mean, I would have gotten sooner if I'd heard about it, but I didn't really hear about it until then. And uh, just, you know, anything I can do to help, you know, bugs or, uh, you know, just being a, you know, trying to be positive in game and, you know, be a, you know, a good member of the community, Any, anything I can do to help the game and keep it, keep it going. And uh, it's a pleasure. You guys have been uh, great. I mean, I've, I've been in a lot of games since Ultima online and prior to then with, you know, adventure games, you know, and Sierra and LucasArts, LucasFilm before that. I mean, but of course, origin games. I mean, you know, I, I pretty much played every single origin game there ever was. Um, you know, and uh, I still do sometimes on, uh, you know, emulators and whatnot. But, uh, you know, this game just really keeps on going. You know, it's like the little, en little engine that good. And uh, it's just great. I mean, to be to be recognized for that, I never expected this. I mean, I just wanted to help out. I didn't I wasn't trying to get an award or trying to achieve anything. It was just something that kind of happened and kind of surprised me. And uh, it's awesome. And I, I really appreciate you guys, uh, you know, recognizing that. And thank you so much. You are obviously very, very welcome and very well deserved, and and I know uh, your peers, all of us uh, in the community, uh, uh, you know, want to recognize that too. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, let's go over to Bridge Troll since I can see him here in the game if my connection is actually working. Uh, so uh, give that a little test there. There we go. Hello, hello, Bridge Troll, and. Uh, uh, Rich Soller, Randy Cooper, uh, you know, you're, you're, you're someone, again, uh, as this case with all four of you, it's it, for us to choose to give someone an award, uh, it, it means they're not only doing amazing things, which so many of the community does, but they do it, you know, for a, a, a long period of time over and over again and continue to do it, uh, you know, uh, you know, beyond the, the pale, beyond the, uh, uh, you know, to a, to a point where it's clearly a uh, something that you're passionate about and believe in, and and so we really appreciate your continuing efforts uh, to help uh, you know mentor new players, explaining the skills, helping them directly with training, uh, and uh, uh, and you and you built an entire university. You built Spite University to assist with these efforts, and so you've really helped you know kind of bring together uh, players and the community to help people get over that hurdle. You know, the, the more the, more, the longer a game has been up and the more complex a game or a, a virtual world like this has been in existence, you know, the, it can be daunting for new players to get in. And so having uh, individuals who are willing to help people who only came in more recently kind of understand the depth and complexity is, is really so essential. So thank you, Bridge Stroll. Uh, our hats are off to you. Uh, thank you so much for what you do for us as well. I can't tell, uh, is he still on here with us? To... Are you looking for brown coat? I see two others. Well, here, I'll, uh, I'll go over to brown coat Jason. I can see he's on here. And so, uh, brown coat Jason, uh, great to see you, by the way. So, uh, you are obviously somebody who's been with us, I believe, since the beginning. Uh, you know, uh, I, I have known of you, uh, you know, I, 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 did, I can't remember. Does your, does your name go back into the Ultima Online era? Does it go? Does it predate? Um, it does for a little bit, but not quite back to origin days. So yeah, but uh, but yeah, but I but I at least have, have known of you, and 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 you know, of course, even because you chose a, a name which would be uh, a core name which would be somewhat recognizable. Uh, to to people who are aware of certain fictional pasts, I picked up on your name right away. So I think I think I remembered your name 
from the earliest days of seeing it, even before I knew that you were a particularly active. Not only uh, helped continue to support the Soda Wiki project, but when it was you know launched in, back in I think 2014, uh, but it continues to be sort of the standard repository of all things Shroud of the Avatar, and it now has uh, something on the order of 32,000 pages of detail about Shroud of the Avatar in it. I mean, it's just an unbelievable repository of you know the wisdom and knowledge and truth of this of this game. And I know for a fact, not just recently, but even even years ago, when we, the team, would sit down and go like, what did we put into this and why? We would actually go to the Soda Wiki because the Soda Wiki was often much more accurate information uh, uh, you know, about you know, the journey we'd been on and what the current status was of, of the truth and the reality of, of this world that we've all created together. And so uh, uh, again, for both a resource for the players and the community, as well as the community. Yes, thank you for maintaining our right. own documentation for us. <laughs> Definitely. <Yeah. laughs> Happy to. No, yeah. Uh, so to Wiki, we, we kind of set it off with two dueling wikis and, uh, on two different sites and ended up merging them early in the releases. And ever since then, it's been every release try to get all the information out that we can and all of your new recipes and items and artifacts and everything that's coming out so yeah uh, it's a lot of work but I, I think it's a great resource so I, I literally used it yesterday when i was trying to tell someone about uh the coon shooter jennings Kuntosh album cover and uh like how we had done like that release, the album release. I'm like, we did an album release in the in the game, and like there was this album going. And I like did the Google search, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna go to the wiki, and like, and like sure enough, there was an article about it, and like so, perfecto, like amazing. That's what we're hoping for. You you are a rock stars. Thank you. Definitely, thank you. And. Uh... Uh, and, and so the, 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 all, the four of you are our inductees uh, that, as I mentioned earlier, are that we do only very rarely. And, and so uh, uh, it, it is difficult to overestimate uh, the thanks that we are trying to express to you. And so, uh, you know, greatly appreciated. Sorry, sorry tonight about the few of our, a few of us who had some technical issues, including myself. I can't even tell actually if my game is actually running or not. I think my... My game is frozen. Pretty uh, sure you're disconnected. Here, but, uh, oh, it says shows me disconnected. Great. Uh, but uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, in any case, know that I, uh, uh, I, I, I love to sit in, not love to see you here face to face. Love to participate with you all in game. Uh, and uh, and now suggest uh, we return to partying, Stephen. If I can count on you, since I can't physically or can't you know, can't virtually hand them their uh, uh, virtual uh, ONBE award, if you would take care of making sure they receive them in game. Uh, and then of Absolutely. course, we will get these to you all physically as well. And I look forward to uh, buying you all a drink at the first opportunity we get a chance to get together. Uh, and by the way, I think there's a, by the way, an in-person um, event brewing later this month or early next month, isn't there, Stephen? Uh, well, actually, yes, there is. Uh, okay. I will be traveling to the East Coast, um, and uh, I'm leaving on the 18th. The event is actually on the 20th in Manhattan at the Dave & Buster's. Um, there is a post in the forums about that, and uh, we will all be meeting up about 4 p.m. at Dave & Buster's, and then at, I guess we're scheduling to about 8 p.m., but obviously if... Uh, the festivities continue. The festivities continue. Very good. Well, hopefully, if um, obviously for anybody that can make it up here, uh, great. And otherwise, uh, uh, I will. We look forward to uh, finally seeing each other more face to face here, as we, as more and more of us finally are uh, uh, getting vaccinated. So uh, soon, I hope. Yeah, and, and I guess uh, since um, we're talking about, it, uh, please note that New York City is requiring. Um, vaccination proof of vaccination uh dave and busters does have it up there that you have to be able to prove by showing your card 
or a picture of the card on your phone, as well as, of course, having a mask on and social distancing. Yeah, and uh, and since I live up here, I can tell you they they do check. You can't you can't really use any service or go in, or you go in any store without uh, uh, proof of uh, uh, vaccination. All right, well, I'll send it back over to you, Chris. All right, uh, I was just here trying to get a line up a screenshot so I can capture all these people. I think uh, we've been sitting at like a hundred and twenty ish something people in here. Uh, so it's going to be really hard to pick names out, but I did get a screenshot what you see on the screen there. Uh, but you'll be able to capture. We'll throw the, this up as a YouTube video as well. Uh, but guys, I just want to say thanks uh, each and every one of you guys. I've talked to and spent a lot of time, you know, taking advice from me, Hondas. I think I was just going over some of your bugs this or this morning, uh, scratching my head on why the subscriber reward is not working sometimes for some potions for some people. Uh, yeah, and I couldn't reproduce it myself, but uh, I absolutely saw your screenshots, and uh, it sounds totally yep. legit, but super helpful. It's one, uh, one of those things, you know. <laughs> yeah, Ranko, Jason, for all the stuff you've done in-game and outside the game, and just as a rock-solid person who's always been constructive, uh, and Ampu, uh, in addition to all the other stuff, just love the streams and love the sense of humor, and uh, next time you come to Austin, uh, soon, my, as soon as my kiddo's uh, vaccinated and I have people come to Austin, I'm going to come hang out with some people, but... Uh, my daughter will be vaccinated next week, so the excuses are running out. And Bridge Troll, uh, same for you, man. All the stuff in game and all the good feedback we give, I guarantee I've implemented features from each and every one of you guys as feedback at some point along the way. So, guys, uh, a huge thank. We we uh, we are going over all the stuff that we were talking about today. The stream. Let me see who it'll kick off if I put myself back up there. Hold on. I think. Ah. Kick somebody off. Oh, no, it kicked. Okay, I'm good with kicking those two guys off. Now, Ihondas is in the position of power on the stream. You're in the center square. Uh, oh. They should they should definitely go for you first if you're doing tic tac toe. Yeah. Uh, but, guys, uh, one of the things we talked about today, I was trying to do a stream of like, here's all the things about Shroud of the Avatar that are amazing and like unique uh, and special. And I was going over like all the player dungeons and the skill system and you know, uh, heraldry and all that stuff. The thing that 100% of the time people argue about some things, they never argue about the community for Shroud of the Avatar. And it's because of, you know, some of the rock solid people out there like you guys that they say that, that the community, there is no no question about the community being the most amazing community out there for for the game. So guys, thanks, thanks so much for all the stuff you do for us. And Man, we'll just keep trying to make the game better for you, and uh, a lot of it is easier to make better because of all the great stuff you guys are doing. Feedback from from uh, all of you and Ampu for streams and offline information, brown coat and Bridge Troll and uh, Deontis. I mean, just all of you guys do amazing stuff in game. So glad to see you in in person. Put some faces to 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 names and. Uh, We'll keep making it better. We got a short release coming up, but guys, thank you so much for uh, being here, and it is all well deserved, I think. Uh, Ravlox, are you going to be shipping off some physical medals? That is correct. I have the um, I have the medals here. Hopefully, this is coming up clearly, but yep. uh, um, I will be shipping these out to. Um, I'll be sending notes to the uh, you guys to get the addresses and such. Um, I have uh, this medal here is actually going to be hand delivered to Acondas when we go to New York City. So if anybody else is going to meet me up in New York City, let me know in, uh, in Discord. Otherwise, I will definitely ship these out to you guys. Awesome. Yeah, the last time uh, Ravelox was down here, he he uh, politely asked if he could have a few medals so he could ship them. I'm not sure if he. Uh, it almost seemed like he didn't trust my shipping ability. Hmm, very strange. Uh, you're you're sure just what... too busy, my lord. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wanted to give a special thanks to the dev team. I mean, uh, it's not often that we have access to a dev team like we do here at uh, Shroud of the Avatar. I know we put you guys through a lot of hell sometimes with, you know, the uh, we're, we're opinionated, let's put it that way. <laughs> but uh, you guys have been responsive, and I, I think that deserves a special thank you. So thank you very much, guys. We sure try. Thank Thanks you. so much. 
uh, for the kind words and noticing. And yeah, and, uh, uh, we try to listen. I mean, again, part of the reason for this stream was pulling in a lot of people from new people into the game. Uh, and if uh, it's not just you know lip service or us saying that you know devs are accessible, we try to be super accessible. We listen to you guys. We get on streams, and we actually so much of the game is because of like the four guys in the stream and feedback and ideas. And even if uh, we have an idea, you know, I don't want to say the community should be always constructive because we deserve some, uh, you know, some ragging on sometimes for uh, poor decision. But you guys are great and constructive in terms of turning us in the right direction when we make a bad decision on something. So, uh, again, just thanks so much. And I mean, the game is so much better because of people here. And also all the people down there. I see a lot of names down there I recognize. I see Irish Eyes and uh, Gaylorn Hammer Throw and a bunch of these other people. John Marcus, uh, special shout out to him for letting me sing. Giving me an excuse to sing in Christ Palad. Just so many different names out there. Uh, Holly Hawk, <laughs> Holly Hawk, speaking of uh, poor uh, job at on least it wasn't. Here. It was At least it wasn't me singing. <laughs> oh, that's I said. We well, should wait until you get here because there's, there's one more song. We had three... Uh, three people uh, pay for songs. We got to do one more. Yeah, so and don't you, forget, you got a bunch of prizes to do here before you sign off. Oh, that's right. I, I, need, I need to start clicking buttons there. Uh, but oh, I will I was start. Uh, propose we are the world too. We are. The oh God. <laughs> Sorry. Is there any song you would want to sing, or is there anybody anybody else on the stream here? Uh, Brown coat. Uh, Bridge troll. I, I think Hondas? my internet is Anybody? skipping. I'm afraid <laughs> I won't be able to sing. All right. Well, I'm going to start kicking off some uh, prizenings here. We're going to have to stall some people because I have to do seven prizenings. Well, maybe is if it... you come to uh, Dave and Buster's, Chris, you can visit, and uh, we'll all go to karaoke or something. Is this the Car Dave and Buster's in New York? Yeah, yeah. but I don't. I don't think you're going to make it. <laughs> no, we we actually. Uh, the, the uh, wife is super cautious, so we're that's good. Not for me. Better but... safe than sorry. Next time people hey, are not even when here. I go, even when I go out there, I'm driving. I'm not. Uh, I'm going to stay isolated as I go. Hey, is there a fishing contest going on right now? There is. I'm going to give. Uh, there's also some extra life stuff going on. Uh, that's another thing to call out in terms of charity. This one is uh, Vulcan Jedi uh, is doing it. But uh, that's one of those things I would call out just in general for the community, you know, as we talk about the community being amazing and unbeatable. That is one of those things that I just see as a sign is just how many people in the community are doing things for other people in the community and outside the community. We've had a number of times where we've had uh, community members in need and the community has come together in amazing ways. And even when that's not going on, just so many different charity type stuff and people running events for charities. Uh, I'm gonna give uh, Vulcan Jedi as soon as this is over. If he's on, if he's got, a, if there's an extra live stream going on, I'm gonna be giving it to those guys to uh, go watch them and give them a little love. And I am working on the queue. Can someone else stall for me here? <laughs> I gotta get the the prizenings going. I could show uh, some statues I'm working on if you guys want. If these are the ones Damon showed us earlier, they look pretty nice. Do it. You want to do that? What were you about to say, Stephen? Did you have something? Oh, no. I was just going to remind everybody that I'm going to be away for three weeks, as we're just noting that I'm going to New York City. So um, Player Dungeons stuff will... I'm going to try to get the spider rooms out this month, uh, but uh, I'm probably not going to see much in the way of December. However, January is a long release for us. We have a six-week work window. So uh, be sure to be looking for... Uh, what it could be? R97 should... Uh, have a lot of dungeon work on it. Awesome. Yeah, so, somebody, somebody in the uh, Twitch chat said, "Hey, Lord British, you could sing us a shanty." You know, it's it's funny. Uh, you know, I, I know a lot of you probably have young kids, but your mind being seven and nine, they're always picking up on the latest uh, music trends on TikTok. And uh, uh, there is a shanty called the Wellerman that I'm sure all oh, of you have yeah. heard. My right daughter, now. my daughter, say, well, and so. She sings that one, and then I responded, "That's not nearly as good as mine, which is the drunken sailor shanty." And I'm like, "Yeah, oh yeah." I'm like, "I'm like, well, man, that's lame. You gotta, you gotta sing. What shall we do with the drunken sailor?" 
That's a much better but, shape. But my daughter was horrified when she realized she was like singing a period piece of music though. She thought she was like singing the really most modern, trendy, young oh. person song and didn't realize she was like, you know, picking something from, you know, the archaic past. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, no, so I, so when, she, when my daughter brought me that one, that sea shanty, I immediately talk, taught her, what shall we do with the drunken sailor? No. Excellent. And, and she was, she was, she was not horrified because she's my daughter. So she, she, <laughs> she rolled her eyes slightly, but she was like, oh, of course, of course, dad, you would teach me. This is my 11 year old daughter. You would teach me a song Thanks. about drunken sailors. <laughs> uh, uh, speaking of charity, I'm do, uh, we're not doing uh, the mustache or the avatar team, but I am doing Movember again. It's my little salt and pepper stash. So, uh, yeah, you got you got you got barely a stash going there. Well, it's only, it's you know it's the fifth. You're gonna stick I mean, into it. Pretty good, pretty good, all right. right? All right, all right. We'll see. At right. least you still got some pepper in there. My kids keep telling me I don't have any left in mine. Show. Yeah, you're 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 yeah. pretty white there. And my, bra- my braid is still blonde. My braid is still blonde. I, I still find myself legitimately blonde. Sure. Yeah, these are, uh, there's 16 different statues, tabletop, normal, and giant sized, and pedestals uh, for you to put other types of items on um, that uh, Damon acquired and got them ready for the game. And uh, some really, really nice, uh, let me slow down my slew a little here. Um, really, really nice statues that will really help you augment your properties and towns and stuff. Um, like that one. Yeah, that's the, just the demon statue. I notice it's spelled D-E-M-O-N, not D-A-E-M-O-N, like we do in our game. So I don't know if I should probably switch that over. It, I mean, obviously, the statue representation of what somebody thought a demon looked like. So, I mean, it, just because it looks different doesn't mean anything. But um, then we got the fine horse statue. This uh, I really like this one too. We have a couple horse statues already, but this one's this one's really nice. And I like the the, the rectangular pedestal. These pedestals are awesome. And then uh, let's see what we got here. We got a gargoyle. People have been asking for gargoyles for a while. Um, I'm thinking about maybe uh, figuring out a way to put him on an outcropping that you can put on the wall too. That'd be cool. Um, to have like a wall version of a gargoyle. But man, he's just awesome. Those hands coming down on the on the edge. Let's see what else we got here. We and then all the say one more time. You got to make him spout during the rain. Oh, there you go. Yep. <laughs> uh, say so. These are the giant versions, and I'll show a couple of those. I'll just give you a close up of the the smaller, the, the medium sized ones. Here's a Griffin one. I like that too. So I'm, basically what I'm doing right now is taking screenshots though, guys, that actually takes up a, a decent amount of my time each month doing store screenshots, you know, staging them. I just make up a little stage and, um, you know, and uh, take pictures. Uh, let's see here, let's see. I like these guardian angel ones. These are so cool. I think this is the one I had out ready to take a screenshot of when uh, I screen shared. That one is just awesome. I love that one. And then, uh, then a regular garden statue just without the, the wings. So you have like a lot of options with wings, without wings to really help you customize the, the look. And we are almost and ready lion, to prize any, by the way. Lion statue. We don't have cats in game yet, but we know you guys want them. So maybe this will be a good you know, teaser that we'll get them soon. But the, the member, everyone came from Earth anyway through the rift, right? So they brought lore with them about animals that don't exist here. Um, then a nice, wide, long pedestal for you guys to put other decorations on. A, uh, or sacrifice altar. Oh, yeah, or sacrifice altar. Yeah, I imagine you could use these for world building too. These are really good quality. Yeah, yeah, nice. Okay. And then uh, and here's a, a low round one. Low square. Did I buy enough time, Chris? You did. We're done. I'm ready. Okay. I, I you guys works. will see the rest in uh, R96, which is only on the 18th. So these will be on the uh, the first. They'll they'll be available on release day. 
Uh, who do we want to make butcher the names? Do we want to have Star butcher the names for old times' sakes? Let's, let's start it this time. Oh, sweet. Are yeah, you, you, have, you, have, you haven't butchered names in a while. Uh, so am I starting at the top? Yeah, so I'll, I'll read off. 455. Here's how we do it now. I read off the prize, and then you read off all seven names that won that prize at once. Wait. Oh, so I have to scroll through all of them? Yeah, these? so you have to scroll through okay, all of them, and each I, one of them. Oh, it's, it's more that, challenging that right now. Even, that makes it even more challenging. It's a challenge. It's a challenge. It goes a lot quicker than saying the same prize name seven times in this case because oh, we, we did two okay. rounds right. of prizes. So, okay, Black, got it. All right. Okay, first prize is Black Leather Chesterfield Sofa and Chair, which goes to... That's Levi cute. Gentle Breeze. Oh, that was a softball. That was an easy one. Okay. And then, uh, so congratulations, Levi. And uh, Mikkel Rain. So that one's a, uh, that was a little little challenging. Uh, Gravity, Rowena Roseberry, Sparkle Sunshine, Scudder Lunching, Luchink. Uh, yeah, that was a, that was a, that was that was a good that was a good one. Uh, and Baragon. Congratulations, all the winners of the black leather Chesterfield sofa and chair. Now for the next one, bonfires go to Finrear. Jagerson, mm -hmm. Lamba Sun, Dorn Slate, Archon Shieldbreaker, Submarine Mike, and Ming, uh, Mingo the Bard, and Eldane Elvenstone. Nicely done. Next up we have Ornate Backslung Loot. All right, Simon LeBon. Ah, nice, a Duran Duran fan. Uh, maybe it's the real Simon LeBond. Do you think he plays our game? <laughs> Somehow, I doubt it. All right, uh, sorry, I got distracted. Got distracted by a little... Oh, you should sing a Duran Duran song, Chris. Uh, sorry, I'm still distracted. What? This is, this is like a cat and a laser toy with me. All right, uh, uh, let's see, Ornate, uh, gotta keep going. Okay, Ornate, okay, back this one. Uh, Ornate, back slung, uh, loot. Uh, Oh God! Wait, what? Uh, I'd call that Zix. Zix. It's X I X O X I X. Zix a Zix. Is that how you say that one? All right. That was it. Okay. Whoever. Okay. That's just. That is obviously someone just messing with us, right? Uh, all right. Uh, uh, C K K K. Okay. This is another one. The, the last name is. K C O. It's psycho. It's psycho. Oh, psycho. <laughs> oh. oh, see, this is good. This is really that, that was good. I really, this is like that uh, uh, Key and Peel episode. A Ron. These are my people. A Ron. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, Blaze Garsink. Uh, Galantius Light. Ian uh, Barry. And Azurian De Fresna. Next up, we have the Ancient Stone well Blue Chapel Dungeon Room, which goes to... Cringe, which is what people are doing while they're listening to me talk right now. Wait till I sing. Uh, Thor Tordengood, Tantalus, Aristodemus, Ascati, Inkling, and Kite Starwind. Wow, those were actually all pretty straightforward. Those yeah, those, all right. those are easy. That was... Last but not least... Lich statue goes to Crystal Stardust, Lilia Lightbringer, Greedy Gress, Sean Silverfoot. Oh, I read uh, the first red name I recognize him. Uh, uh, Foot, Sparkle oh, Sunshine. Oh, first red name I recognize. Well, that's me. Hold on. Sorry. Just trying to throw you off. Wait, did, didn't Sparkle Sunshine win the black leather? It's okay. They can win twice. Oh, okay. We just right. roll Sky with it now. Shadow, Meadow, and Vero. Awesome. Congratulations, guys. All right. Congratulations. That was fun. Congratulations. I, I want to do this more often just so I can read these names. I'm, I, I got I to gotta come back to the live streams if I get to do this every time. This was fun. <laughs> hey, Ron. I think uh, Elgarion's showing off some of the other items coming up with the uh, Dread stuff. 
That's I good. I know. I think those are look. Those look great. I guess those are the deco versions, which are going to be great. Yeah, correct. Uh, they already look fantastic being able to wear it, but uh, be able to put it out on the ground now. Your museums and stuff is going to be fantastic. All right. All right, guys. Well, I think, has anybody else got any uh, highlights that we need to hit before we wrap it up and call it an evening? This has been, uh, yeah, let me, uh, some of us, a four hour street. Just say, uh, go ahead. So, well, um, first of all, uh, uh, the recipients of the ONBs may rise. So just say, um, if they wish, um, and, uh, ONBEs, again, uh, as Richard had said, that uh, we try to um, award these at least once a year. Uh, they're very, they're pretty much very rare. Uh, depends on what's going on as to how, you know, how many are going to be handed out and how often. Uh, so uh, as we approach more physical and real life events, uh, then we'll probably see more of those uh, uh, ceremonies occur as well in real life. Um, the uh, process for nominations would be to reach out to me if there's a player that you see in the community uh, that you feel should be recognized. Uh, just reach out to me. You could PM me in Discord or PM me on the official forums, and uh, I'll get them into the uh, the queue of nominations. And uh, if uh, they meet the uh, the requirements, then they may get an ONBE. Awesome. Uh, well, I think that's it. Anybody have any other final words? If not, I'll wrap things up here. We can, uh, I can let Richard, you want to wrap things up? Well, uh, I think everything, it's all been said pretty well. Just to, you know, the, the deep gratitude and thanks we have to, uh, you know, everyone starting with the team, everyone starting, uh, again, starting again with the, the recipients of our, of, of the OMBEs this cycle, uh, Starting uh, yet again, or you know, calling out again, you know, all of you in the community that gathered here today with us uh, to celebrate these four amazing individuals, uh, and of course, everyone in the community who who isn't with us today, but the many thousands of you that that are, that are still standing by us, standing by us, and standing by this project to make it happen. So, thanks, thanks to all of you, and good night. Thank. Uh, I have one thing. Thank you to uh, Eve Midnight for keeping the fish people versus the horse people war alive. So, <laughs> very, very important. That's yeah. a dream. And, <laughs> and of so course, I dream one day. Very, very important. The horse versus fish people war. Come, come oh yeah, Thank around, around the corner. <laughs> Good night, All right. Good night. Thank you very much, guys. I am Good looking night. for Thank who to raid here. And we have uh, uh, some other great community members. I see Graceful Bard is on. I don't see the fishing tournament. I see a couple people who are streaming here. I see Coswald streaming Bye. here. Uh, oh. Night. But, uh, man, this is a tough one. Graceful Bard's got 21. Coswald. Uh, Coswald's another one of those guys, community guys, that's uh, absolutely amazing and uh, done a ton of stuff. His streams have been super informative. I'm not sure who to raid here because they're all here. Oh, that's good. We're getting some. Yeah. They're trying to crash the game on us. Yeah, I told them that it was okay to. Uh, that now would be a good time to start. crash things out. All right. Well, I'm going to do they a quick. Were very uh, politely uh, well behaved. Uh, I want to say. Yeah. Uh, everyone's seriously. Much they have been. There are a few like effects popping off here and there, but you, you held off. So thanks. Let's see. All, that. All right, I'm picking one at random here. <laughs> yeah. And it looks like we're going to go give uh, Graceful Bard is amazing, but it looks like the uh, dice have chosen Coswald. We will be giving Coswald a raid. Uh, if you want to learn how to play the game, he's the guy. If you guys want some uh, amazing music, along with some uh, storytelling and some other stuff, Graceful Bard's your person. Cedric Sky's a new person. If you want to head over to hit them up, uh, I raided them just yesterday or day before, else I'd give them a raid. And then uh, Serpent Twine is also another longtime streamer. The dice have chosen Cosworth, though, so I think we're going to head over there. And we're preparing for the raid. Guys, I just want to say thanks so much. Richard Starr, thanks so much for being on the stream, uh, in addition to all the other stuff. 
And uh, Keith and uh, Sanyo, Ravlox, Elgarion, guys, thank you so much for making all this stuff happen too and, and also be amazing. Uh, I am afraid I do owe you one last not amazing thing as we get close to rating here. I will keep it short, but somebody did give us some bits there and no one else has volunteered to sing. You sure, Brian Coach Jason? This is your chance. You on this? No? No one wants to hear that. Well, no one wants to hear me either, but they, they get to anyways. Uh, so we'll just... I'll say if we little... get drunk and do karaoke. Uh, I, hey, I did it. Uh, Last Syndicon, I did karaoke with people and got drunk. So looking forward to doing Chris, some in-person right, stuff. Go ahead. One last, one last thing before we go. You should probably post the uh, link in the, um, in the chat again for the uh, offer. Uh, I did just a minute ago. I will post it again here in just a second, though. Uh, but okay, right now, let's see... I'm going to run out of time soon, but I'll post it one more time, and then I'm going to sing us out because we only got like 30 seconds or 10 seconds left. This is one of my favorite places, our new song, or band's Lake Street Dive. I'm going to butcher this so bad. If you're going to tell them everything, tell them I'm a good kisser. Tell them all the things you told me. And you, Oh, good. It's over. I don't have to sing anymore. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> 